Oakley Doakley, everyone. We are la 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 live here on this episode of Wheats. Uh oh, stream offline. Nope, we're back. We're back. We're back. We are here. We are back on this Wheats live. This. Thank you to all of Reddit and all of uh, r slash trees that came and uh, supported us earlier in the week, which was really, really helpful. So today, as the thumbnail suggested and the name suggested, I am going to bite the bullet, do the thing that I've always been too scared to actually do, and that is review the Corova Black Bar all by myself, just me. I'm not going to do it all at once because I'm too much of a coward but we're gonna do the whole thing guys over the course of the next couple of hours here we're gonna get really fucking high together uh and i'm probably gonna fail spectacularly just letting you know just setting up expectations right now that this is probably gonna be a failure i got my braid in my hair i'm ready to go um oh i also came uh in case you didn't notice from the uh the picture i've got my beard brush here i know uh reddit was really really disappointed with my uh my beard, so I want to show them my grooming techniques, make sure they understand that I take care of this here. I appreciate my beard. I give it the uh, love and attention it so deserves. I even bomb it on occasion. Beard bomb. Amish made or something. I can't remember the name. It's good. Keeps it soft. All right. Well, uh, how is everyone doing today? Um, I am nervous as all hell. I'm very, very nervous about this effing brownie. Um, uh, to give a little bit of history, I think this is the third one of these I have done, maybe fourth. Um, I have uh, failed twice, and I have done it once with the Wheats co-host. Uh, the Wheats co-host and I split one one time uh, over the course of like four hours, and we both got super high. I got higher than he did, uh, but there are two failed attempts in the Wheats vaults as well of me... Um, uh, failing this. I appreciate you, uh, uh, Mr. Comancho. I know I can do it. I know I can do it too. So let's just go ahead and open it uh, right now and let's do a little bit. Let's just start it off nice and easy, you know? Let's, uh, let's, let's not go crazy here. Okay, so uh, yes, I failed uh, twice in the past on a personal level and I succeeded doing it with somebody else, but I got really high just doing half of it. So. Um, Hopefully all this Canico I've been doing recently, though, is getting me primed, because I've been doing a lot of Canico reviews, and they are potent as hell. All right, I've got my uh, Arnold Palmer here, Arizona tea, 99 cents, great value, great buy, uh, you know, just to uh, keep me hydrated over this stream and to uh, help me choke down this brownie, because if I remember correctly, it doesn't taste very good. Ah, delicious. Okay. So here we are. Here is our... Oh, shit. All the mint icing is melted off. Let's try to scoop it out. So that's all the mint icing that should be on it, but isn't. Okay, guys. I uh, Okay. Here we go. So this is what it looks like. Pretty ugly. I just sort of smeared that icing back on. It is remarkably small for a thousand milligram edible. I mean, this thing is freaking tiny, dude. It's, um, uh, you know, let's see. It weighs, uh, does it say on here somewhere? I don't know. It can't weigh more than an ounce or so. Super, super, super tiny and super, super potent. It smells a lot like weed. It does not smell tasty. It does not smell tasty at all. Uh, the mint odor so, sort of helps uh, cover it up a little bit, but it is not the tastiest or the uh, best smelling thing either. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and cut off a chunk here. I'm thinking about doing a third to start with. Ugh. There we go. So here is the first portion of our Corova. Uh, 20 dose medical cannabis mint black bar. That is not good. Mmm. Ugh. 
a lot of weed taste to it. Glad I have this bad boy here. Rest in peace, Arnold Palmer. Rest in peace. <laughs> Does not taste good. Um, oh, God. Oh, uh, so here's what we've done so far, by the way, gents, ladies and gents. We've done about a third, or we've chopped off a third of our, this brownie. Uh, I'm going to finish this third right here. Tastes terrible. Really bad. Strong weed taste. Light weed taste. Ugh. Oh, my dog just left. Let's see if we can get a dog back in here. Dog! I've got three. Let's see which one shows up, if any. Dog! Hey, I got a dog. Nudie. Nudie. Up. Come here. Come on. Nudie. All right. We got a dog. Gonna get waiting for this uh, brownie to take effect. Oh, that tastes terrible. Dog took my headphones off. Funny story about that dog, by the way. Real quick, I was on the side. That dog, her name's Newt. She's a Border Collie mix. Smart dog, nice dog. She's six. So she's in her middle ages. Um, when we got her, uh, we wanted a big, big dog. Uh, we went to the shelter uh, and picked up a dog. They actually thought she was a great Pyrenees mix. And um, so when we got the dog, they're like, how big do you want your dog to be? And I said, I wrote on the little form, it was like, oh, I don't know, 50 pounds? And this woman laughed. She's like, this dog is going to be way, way bigger than 50 pounds. So I was like, oh, man, I knew I wanted a big dog, but... I was um, a little nervous that I was going to get something huge. Well, rest assured, she weighs 25 pounds. They were way, way wrong about what she was. She's no great Pyrenees mix. She's a, uh, she's a Border Collie mix. Uh, very, very, very different kinds of dogs. But we compensated for our second dog, and we got a Great Dane, about as big as you can get. Okay, so the first third of that brownie is down. Now we play the waiting game, which is getting high. Got to wait for myself to get high. That's the thing about these live reviews is um, you, uh, you just have to kind of wait for them to come on. So let's talk, guys. Let's gab. Uh, I got the gift of gab. Um, we can talk about any questions you want. Uh, you have questions. I've got answers. I can talk about dogs. I can talk about weed. I can talk about edibles. I can talk about physics. I can talk about astronomy. I can talk about cosmology. I can talk about, oh, geez. Um, uh, anything. You just, you just let me know. Oh, that brownie still tastes terrible, dude. Still tastes terrible. Um, okay. Let's talk about, uh, about edibles, guys. I want to tell you what kind of, uh, edibles and companies you need to be, um, purchasing, what you need to be looking out for, uh, and things around the country. So, the cardinal rule I have discovered with edibles thus far, guys, is... Certainly. Uh-oh. Washington Post alert. Here we go. Bing, 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 bing. North Korea, the North Korea threat isn't keeping many Alaskans awake at night. I'm worried about moose, not missiles. Thanks, Washington Post. That is a shitty thing to update me for. I thought we were going to get some, like, real announcements, you know. Maybe North Korea was going to nuke us here on the West Coast or something. What dosage do I recommend for beginner edibles? Great question, Camacho. Now, Camacho, uh, my question to you is, what do you mean by uh, beginner? Do you mean uh, beginner like you just started smoking, or have you been smoking for a while and want to move into edibles? Because there's a very big difference there, I would say. Um, I mean, I would still start small either way, but if you never, if you're like a beginner smoker, if you're a beginner just in um, uh, cannabis in general, you basically want to stay at the absolute lowest dosage. Uh, if you've smoked before, you can go ahead and go up to something a little bit more potent. Um, so, let's say you're a seasoned uh, smoker, Mr. Camacho. 
or Miss Camacho, I don't know. I uh, don't want to impose either way. Uh, if you're a seasoned uh, stoner, you could probably start moving into edibles. Okay, good, 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 good. Moving into edibles. Um, I would say go ahead and start with, uh, in what part of the country do you live in? Because it, it, I would give you some recommendations for actual products if you live on the West Coast. Some good beginner ones. If you live in Colorado or something, all their products are different. Or excuse me, Colorado. Uh, all their products are very different, and I don't really know the names. But I would suggest that you start with um, chocolate bars. Uh, oh, Mississippi? Ooh, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I mean, I, no offense to Mississippi. I, I, I know Mississippi happens to be... Hey! Oh, you live in Cali? Oh, you live in California. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, start with a, a, a chocolate bar. Get, get, grab a Bang Bar or a, a, a Kiva and uh, just go with a piece of that for your first go. <coughs> so, like, if you live in California, grab any of the Kivas... I think they actually sell them in 60 uh, milligram varieties. Grab one of those, eat half of it. That'll do you if that's your first time as an edible. 30 milligrams from Kiva. That'll get you feeling pretty good, I guarantee it. Um, so yeah, I'd start with that. Uh, maybe Bang Bar. Bang Bars come in 120, 180, and 240. Um, I would stick with chocolates. I, I, Dane, I, 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 would, I would respectfully disagree with the gummy bears. I, I just don't find a lot of good gummies out there uh, for me. But they are lower potency, I find, so maybe you will like the gummies more. I'd stick with the chocolate because it's just more, um, uh, the chocolate seems to always be more consistent. Uh, so I would grab a chocolate bar, Bang Bar or Kiva, lowest dosage you can find, and start small. You can always, uh, you can always go up, you can never go down on dosage. So, uh, yeah, I would go ahead and grab yourself a, uh, uh, a Kiva or a Bang Bar that you can find start uh, with the half of the smallest dosage you can find, and that'll get you right where you want to be, probably. But, rest assured, Mr. or Mrs. Camacho, um, yes, chocolates are super, super blissful. Uh, it really just depends. Uh, everybody's going to respond to edibles differently. That's sort of the uh, crazy thing about edibles. Some people, you know, uh, even the lowest dosage, even for the most seasoned stoner, is going to put them in bed. And some people I have seen who, um, you know, don't even smoke that often seem to be impervious to all edibles. Uh, I've got a friend who uh, can eat a 500 milligram can of co and barely feel it. I mean, it, to me, that is, you know, that's nuts. To, that, that, that puts me in the hospital just about. So uh, it, it really just depends. Um, but I would stick with your chocolates, lower dosage to begin with. Now... If you guys have done edibles before and you're looking for recommendation, um, what is that? An anadamide. I don't know what that is, but I would love to know if you could tell me. So, guys, um, if you have done edibles before and you're just looking for the best of the best of the best of the best out there, well, Corova, <coughs> good old Corova, who we're reviewing here today, is uniformly excellent. Um, almost all their products are great. All their products are great in terms of potency. Some are not as tasty as others. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, look at that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Singh. I did not know that. That's really cool. Um, uh, like sort of molecularly, they are molecularly similar to THC, sort of like the molecule is, is similar. Is that how that works? The more you know. Huh. Really? I had no idea. They go together like peas and carrots. Chocolate and THC. Uh, so Corova, guys, Corova is excellent. All their products are great uh, in terms of potency, except stay away from their salted caramel blondie if you uh, don't want to puke, because uh, that thing tastes disgusting. I'm sorry, Corova, if you see this video, and I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, but it, your salted caramel blondie really does taste terrible, and you should just not make that product or tweak your recipe because it's gross. It's gross. It's gross, gross, gross. It's gross. It's gross. It's really gross. It's so gross. Okay. But this, but most of their stuff is, is, is really good. Some of it is actually delicious. I love a lot of their, uh, their edibles actually. Um, if you're a first time stoner, stick with their 150 milligram edibles. Uh, oh my God, that Saturday morning breakfast cookie or my favorite edible ever. 
the uh, or my one-time favorite edible ever. We're gonna have to talk about Canico, the ginger chew. Oh my God, guys! If you like molasses cookies or ginger cookies, the Corova ginger chew is a fucking great cookie. Fucking everyone, ever amazing edible. What's up, Hayes? Everyone has different taste buds. Yes, we do. All our tongues are different. We all have different taste receptors in different places. But it's not at all like we were taught in um, when you're learning about taste buds. We don't actually have little spots on our tongues like back isn't salty and front isn't sweet, all that. It's really more jumbled together and more nuanced than that than we were taught in, um, in middle school. You love the salted caramel blondie. How dare you? Uh, that's okay. I, I forgive you for that. I, I wish I could like it. I really do wish I could like it. I've actually tried it uh, three different times just to make sure I wasn't screwing up uh, and wasn't going to talk shit about Kuroba unnecessarily. But I hated it all three times. What can you do? But I'm glad that you loved it. I am glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, what's my opinion on concentrate vape pens or do you prefer bud? I think there's a difference in high and milligrams. Command show. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm calling you Camacho. It's Camacho. Camacho, I'm sorry. Jeez. Sorry, Camacho. Uh, I like the vape pens. I prefer... Um, whoa. So, uh, Dane was letting us know that they 70% of them were tested for, or tested for pesticides and fungicides, um, which is really a little redundant because pesticide just covers all, like insecticides, herbicides, fungicides. That's what pesticide means, but... That's neither here nor there. I always say that because I was briefly uh, worked in an entomology, well, briefly, I worked in an entomology lab studying bed bugs for two years, which was a really, really fucked up job. Um, kind of gross, actually, studying bed bugs. Um, uh, are, are my am I streaming nonstop for the next five hours? Wants to know, Katie. Katie, uh, my Twitter is uh, at Wheats Reviews, I think. Let's check it out. And I might be trying to stop stream for the next five hours straight if I don't uh, pass out somewhere along the ways. And yes, Katie, uh, my actual friend Katie, how are you, by the way? Uh, the Twitter handle is at Wheats Reviews, W E E A T S R E V I E W S. Not that I had to spell reviews out for anyone. Well, maybe I did for some people, but um, but I didn't know that about the the pens that they were tested tested for pesticides and fungicides, um, meaning that uh, I, I, that when they um, sort of uh, process the bud, the bud had pesticides and herbicides in it. Is that what that means? Is that the buds had or that 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 had Fungicide? I don't know. That's fucked up. I didn't, I haven't heard about that. But um, between the two, I do prefer just straight up bud uh, over the pens if it came to the two. Um, dabs are in, gen in general under fire for pesticides. Really? I did not know that. I mean, is it is it because the bud that that the concentrates come from is being hit with pesticides and fungicides, <coughs> or? Or is there something in the process that they're using pesticides for? Oh, okay, okay. That is really disappointing. That is really disappointing. Um, do you know, uh, I wonder if there are any pen brands that aren't, jeez, uh, those are some uh, pretty harsh chemicals, actually. Um, well, maybe avoid the pens for now, guys. Maybe uh, stick with uh, the flower, nature's, nature's pen. But if the concentrates have pesticides, I would assume at some point they're going to find pesticides in, uh, the flower because it comes, uh, it's the same thing. It's just not processed. It's not, you know, melted down with butane or whatever. I actually don't know exactly how the process works to, uh, to make concentrates. I know it involves butane in some way, but other than that, you had a chick asking her to get a pen. I would say it's still going to be okay to get her a pen, uh, amateur hour squared. Uh, I don't think it's going to get her uh, cancer on, you know, one single pen. Go ahead and get her that pen. She's going to be fine. But maybe in the future, Arizona half and half the way to go. Oh, boy. Not even halfway, guys. I'm only a third of the way in. Ugh. And, yes, this is a half and half 
Arnold Palmer. Oh, funny story about my boy Arnold Palmer, R.I.P. I actually thought he was dead already earlier this year. I thought Arnold Palmer was, um, who's that golfer <coughs> that died in the plane crash in the 90s? Um, we're going to have to look him up. Uh, golfer, Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart, I think. I thought Arnold Palmer was Payne Stewart. And on the day Arnold Palmer died, I was telling somebody that story like, oh, I love Arnold Palmer drinks. It's too bad that he's dead. And they're like, no, he's not dead. He's still alive. I was like, no, he died in a plane crash in the 90s. Remember that plane that like crashed because and everybody in the cabin had depressurized and everybody was passed out and they couldn't save them. Then it just crashed and everybody died. It's like Arnold Palmer was in that plane. He was like, no, you dummy. Uh, Payne Stewart was on that plane. Sure enough, Payne Stewart was on that plane. And that very same day, Arnold Palmer died. <coughs> what a coincidence. Also, do you guys know what we call the studies of coincidences? We call it stochastic studies. Isn't that fun? If I could uh, go back in time, I would be a stochastician, I think. I would study randomness. Because randomness is about the most fun, awesome, cool subject that there is. I would totally be a stochastician if I could go back and do it all over again. Or a data scientist. Or I'd be in a number theory. I don't know, man. It's all so great. Oh, it's all so great. I need some ice cream to go with that black bar. Shay M, you are not wrong. That would absolutely help get that down. Uh, what is my favorite strain? <coughs> I'm boring. I'm boring, uh, Comancho. Um, uh, my favorite strain is Gorilla Glue number four. Love it, love it, love it. Could smoke it all day, every day. Gorilla Glue number four. Pretty basic, but uh, pretty wonderful. I see you're a fan of the OG Kush and White R Fire. I've never tried White R Fire before. Is that a sativa or an indica? Oh, man. I'm starting to get warm, too. I might have to turn this AC on. If it doesn't bother you guys too much sound wise. <coughs> Lord ass mercy. It's some old ass hippie in Brevard in Florida. Oh. Okay, well cool. Um but yes, so uh Arnold Palmer died on the same day that I told everybody he was already dead, but meant Payne Stewart. I think that's who I mean is Payne Stewart. Some golfer died in the 90s in a plane crash, and it was really tragic. I don't, I think the story went, the um, plane depressurized in midair, and everybody passed out, and uh, basically the FAA knew about it, and they wanted to save everybody, but they couldn't, and they basically just realized everybody was doomed until this plane ran out of gas and was going to crash. It was awful. Um... Ben S. asks, do edibles always hit all at once, or can you spread it out over an hour? Well, <coughs> what I'm doing is, um, yes, amateur hour squared is right. It, it usually comes on much more like a wave. Uh, it sort of comes over, it crashes over you. It's not an instant hit like, um, like if you did a dab. Um, it, it sort of, uh, as he's saying it, it sort of perfectly describes it. It, uh, it comes on slowly, it sort of crescendos, 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 and at some point it peaks, and then it comes down nice and smoothly. Again, it is a very, very long process, too. Um, especially if it's the first time doing edibles, I mean, this, the process could go on for like six hours or something, dude. Um, but you always don't... I, I, the one thing I like to tell people, Ben, is you don't have to do the entire edible all at once. Just try a small portion of it, Wait an hour, see how you feel, and then go back and do some more if, uh, if you're not yet um, super high. Um, so yeah, uh, Ben S., just gra if you have an edible, do a third of it at the beginning, see how you feel in an hour. If, uh, if you're not yet feeling like you want to be, uh, do a little bit more and uh, keep going that way. That's my advice to you, uh, which is exactly what I'm doing here with this uh, giant-ass brownie. Uh, Dane says, if I get higher, I get higher if I space it out over 30 minutes or so, but friends of mine like to eat it all at once. I, when I am not doing uh, Weeps reviews, actually like to spread it out over um, uh, a good amount of time as well. I like to spread it out over probably an hour eating an edible. Uh, my favorite thing in the world to do is to go to the movie theater, grab an edible, uh, eat a little bit of it half an hour before the movie, 
eat some during the previews and then eat some during that first half hour and just get higher and higher as the movie goes on. Fucking incredible. Especially if you go to one of those theaters that have those recliner chairs. Oh, man, that is heaven on earth. Man, I love it. Well, guys, I can already... Uh, whoops, muted myself here. I can already feel uh, this brownie starting to hit, and we're only 25 minutes in, and I've only uh, eaten a third of it. But I can already feel it coming in, uh, as, as Amateur Hour Squared was describing, comes on in a wave. And the wave is beginning to rise. We are ebbing, flowing, flow, flow, ebb is back, flow is in. We're flowing, the tide is flowing. Uh, have I ever been in one of those restaurant theaters? You know I have, Amateur Hour Squared, and I have been there high before, and it is uh, awesome mixed with a little bit of revulsion. Let me describe why I say revulsion. Because it is so fucking awesome that you're in a movie theater, you recline all the way back in a chair, you've got people coming and giving you massive mounds of food as a movie's playing, you've got 32-ounce sodas, you feel like a slob, but it's fucking great. It's so awesome. Oh my god, I love it. I would, I would, I would live in a, a dine-in theater if I didn't feel so bad doing it. I always feel, <coughs> I feel bad. I feel bad for the servers who have to like take your food out to you in the middle of a movie when everybody's like recline. It's got to be weird to be a server and like put food in some, somebody's face in, in front of somebody who's laying down at a ninety-degree angle. That just seems odd to me. Um, but I love them. I do. Have you ever been to one amateur hour squared? Have you ever been to one of the restaurant theaters? There are quite a few of them here in Southern California. Now, the more important question, though, when it comes to movie theaters is, have you guys ever been to a 4DX before? Uh, I have been to them several times before, and boy, are they a blast. The 4DX theaters are... Um, you should go, if you get a chance Amateur Hour Squared, go to one of those restaurant theaters. You'll love it. Um, but the 40X theaters are incredible. So, it's basically like turning a movie into a theme park ride. I know what you're thinking. It's well, one of those theaters with like the moving chairs. You're thinking, uh, how fun could that be? You know, I have a chair that moves. It's fun. It's fun. Um, I want to eat a steak and watch a shitty DC movie with IMAX. Here, here, sir. Here, here. That is the way to do it. Um, because all DC movies are shitty. Well, I guess Wonder Woman was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Uh, I thought all the other ones were pretty shitty. But uh, Wonder Woman was pretty good. Alright guys, I know we're only half an hour in, but I think I'm going to eat a little bit more of this brownie right now. So I'm going to not do a full third. I'm going to just do a, a little slice here. Get higher and higher. <coughs> All right, down the hatch. Ugh. Real bad. Real bad. Okay, back to 4DX theaters, which are awesome. Not like the taste of that. The way they work, you got moving chairs, so you're rocking and you're rolling during your movie. Not just that. They've got um, water that sprays in your face. They've got smell of vision like legit uh, they have some stuff oh dude amateur hour squared I got a straight up phobia of milk it's such a rare phobia they don't even have a name for it but I'll just go and make one up right now I have lactophobia let's see if anybody's ever done that before does anybody have lactophobia yes I have a fear of milk um, uh, I know what you're thinking that can't possibly possibly true possibly be true nobody can actually have a fear of milk some hemp milk, hell yeah. But I do, I have a fear of milk, dude. It's disgusting. It comes from a cow's uh, udder. It's gross. I haven't had milk since I've probably been three years old. I, I don't even know what it tastes like. I assume it tastes disgusting, but I, I just couldn't imagine drinking it. No offense, but it's the devil's juice. Milk. But it probably would help me get that done. You're fucking with me. There is a, there is a fear of milk. Gallophobia or lactophobia. I was right. 
It's the fear of milk. The fear is developed because of their sour lactose taste, intolerance to lactose, or even drinking spoiled milks that taste yucky. <coughs> Probably one of those things when I was a child. I haven't had it since. Isn't that fucking crazy? That is, that is pretty crazy. Yeah, well, I have it. Uh, yeah, I've got me some galophobia, or lactophobia, whatever you want to call it. So, unfortunately, I can't drink it. Um, yeah, I also have a fear of, um, what else? Oh, jeez, I've got a lot of phobias. I hope we all do. I've got, uh, phobias of public speaking. I've got a phobia of drugs. I've got a phobia of dogs. I've got a phobia of, um the internet i've got a phobia of you know just just about everything but i'm also into exposure therapy so that's why i'm doing this right now um uh, yeah so uh oh god guys that brownie is already hitting i am definitely feeling it definitely definitely feeling it already getting pretty high only a half an hour in too oh you're afraid of horses and dolphins Horses make sense, but amateur hours squared, how the hell are you afraid of dolphins? Exposure therapy, you say. Yes, yes. So there's a phobia of milk and a phobia of sour milk. A serophobia is the fear of sour milk. I'm afraid of both milks. In my life, the best prank ever pulled on me, actually, was um, I was in college, and uh, somebody knew I had this fear of milk, knocked on my door, hid uh, underneath of it so I couldn't see him through the people and then as I opened the door two people jumped out with super soakers filled with milk and sprayed me down it was terrifying but it was a good prank I gave him credit for it after I was done screaming um, but uh, <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't have any phobias of dogs kitty I was, I was being facetious uh, nor do I have a fear of public speaking dolphins have weird ass teeth and they rape uh, they do have weird ass teeth, um, and they are known for, um, being amorous with both humans and other dolphins. They have, um, made love to humans against their will before. Yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes. But it's hard to say whether animals are capable of the R word. I don't think I'm allowed to say that word. I don't know. MAPS got some serious studies using MDMA and exposure therapy to cure PTSD in its Phase 3 FDA trials. Oh boy, doesn't everybody have uh, some incredible, great research about um, uh, MDMA, ecstasy, or hallucinogenics being used to, to treat PTSD or depression, and how absolutely uh, promising those studies are. But we've got a pretty dumb government that doesn't want to uh, fund them, and... Um, me, I'm all for it. I think I think uh, we need to be uh, putting more and more money into research with hallucinogenics and ecstasy, MDMA, uh, all those kind of drugs in terms of treating PTSD. Because PTSD is obviously a huge, huge, huge problem in the United States right now. Um, that's a real fear of dolphin rapes. Oh, shit. Uh, dolphins have been known to... Uh, wow, that is pretty uh, disturbing. But is it still the R word? Because, uh, I, again, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it is pretty easy to avoid both dolphins and horses. Horses, uh, you might run into if you live in a crowded city when the police officers come through with their horses or if you live in the countryside. But dolphins, you don't ever have to see a dolphin in your life if you don't want to. Unless you're in a third game classroom and uh, you got a lot of girls with their Lisa Frank notebooks. But that might be the only place you ever need to be exposed to dolphins. Or that excellent episode of King of the Hill where Hank gets uh, molested by a dolphin. One of my favorite episodes of an incredible TV show, King of the Hill. All of you guys need to be watching King of the Hill always, 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 constantly. Because King of the Hill is great. I'm pretty sure there are YouTube channels that are just dedicated to like showing live King of the Hill. Uh, let's go ahead and just give you guys my favorite joke of all time from King of the Hill. I tell this to everybody that I know personally all the time because it's such a wonderful joke. Uh, you have to know the characters to know why it's funny, but if you've ever seen King of the Hill, trust me, you'll, you'll understand why it's funny. So, uh, Bill is seeing Puff the Magic Dragon in the alley. He's going, Puff the Magic Dragon lives by the sea. And Hank goes, Bill, you can't sing that song. Don't you know what it's about? And then he kind of looks around for a little bit, and he goes, 
It's about a dragon. That is the best joke ever written of all time in the history of jokes. I dare anybody to come up with a better joke than that. Mike Judd is a complete genius, and that joke is as incredible as ever. Uh, Dane, I am not celebrating this year's Shroom Fest, but I would love to. I actually just had my first experience on shrooms a couple of months ago. I did not do enough of them, unfortunately, to get where I wanted to be. Uh, I more or less sort of micro-dosed on them, I guess. I experienced a little bit of something, but uh, nothing approaching anything that you could call a hallucination. Sort of more just enhanced senses. Enhanced sensory perception, I would describe it. But... I would love to celebrate Shroom Fest in the future. I think uh, mushrooms are a wonderful drug uh, with tons of tons of therapeutic potential uh, if only we could uh, allow ourselves to do it. But so far, we're not doing it. Okay, guys, this is... How are my eyes doing? Are we getting red yet? Not yet. No red in there just yet. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, three and a half grams is pretty standard for a real trip. I actually, do, I wish I had measured it out ahead of time. I don't know how much I had done. It seemed like a substantial amount, but, um, but it, it I, I definitely was not, uh, was definitely not high. The highest I've ever been, Ryan Bonzal, is, um, well, outside of, like, the first four times I smoked, which uniformly is, for pretty much everybody, the highest they've ever been. But outside of that, the highest I've ever been uh, would probably be uh, the first time I ever made firecrackers. So uh, if you've never... Um, uh, oh, Dane, I'll respond to you in just a second. <laughs> Are we going to make it five hours? I doubt it. <coughs> um, no, we're going to make it five hours. But yes, the highest I've ever been was the first time I ever made firecrackers. Uh, I had probably 10 grams, maybe 15 grams of dried uh, vaped bud. Vi vaped bud. I had used um, a Pax. Uh, so I had like maybe 10 to 15 grams of vape bud. And, and didn't even eat all, uh, maybe, I don't know, a third of that, maybe five grams in one firecracker, which is a graham cracker with some like Nutella or peanut butter baked in the oven for a little bit with just the vaped bud in there. First time I made it, oh my god. I, I had done edibles already, too. I had done many edibles. I mean, not an outrageous amount. I started maybe two months prior to that. I started doing edibles. But um, I guess I just overdid it the first time I made firecrackers. And holy fuck. <coughs> I did them with, a, with, with my partner. And um, I remember we were on the couch after we ate them. And I was like, oh, I'll go pick up some food. So I left, walked to go pick up some food. And as I was paying, it's when it hit me. I went, oh, shit. It, it, it was not like a wave at all. It hit me like a sack of bricks, uh, which is super uncharacteristic for, for edibles. But I was in line getting ready to pay, and then the uh, ton of bricks dropped on me, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to make it home. I somehow was able to pay. I think it took me three or four swipes to get the card going right. Um, managed to carry the uh, food back. I think it took me five minutes to walk there and about 20 minutes to walk back. Uh, never made, never uh, got the food even in the refrigerator. Made it to the uh, the couch to where my partner was, sort of grabbed at where, sh where the partner is and then fell asleep for the next six hours. And uh, the poor food was never eaten because it uh, went bad because I never even got in the refrigerator. So that was the highest I've ever been. The first time, first and only time I've ever greened out. So uh, Dane says that my first trip with shrooms was actually spot on. The allergen spore test is important. I feel like blasting yourself on shrooms has been fetishized hardcore. That is probably true. Uh, I was actually really interested in doing it for, for therapeutic reasons, uh, shrooms. Uh, so I probably went in it more intense than I needed to at the beginning, but I didn't end up getting... Um, uh, hi, anyways. And yes, five grams of a, uh, AVB, uh, which I can now do pretty easily, uh, but back then it put me uh, total couch lock. Not, I mean, it knocked me out, to be entirely honest. I mean, it, I was passed out. It was the only time it's ever happened, but I did get couch lock. Um, oh my God, firecrackers. Me and my friends who rarely smoked at the time made some for a beach trip. We all fell asleep and talked wire beach in the middle of the day. 
So I feel like the zombie with the fire going down, the sun setting, my eyes all blear like the beginning of a zombie movie. Beautifully written. I Yes, that's the way it felt for me too. Uh, I remember waking up like six hours later and still feeling like uh, I was the walking dead. I'm glad somebody needed to put a bullet right between my eyes to sort of reset everything. But yeah, so first time doing firecrackers, definitely the highest I've ever been in my entire life. Uh, outside of like the first time I was smoking. And the first time I was smoking, I don't know if everybody has a similar experience. Excuse me. Sometimes those things make me kind of belchy, which is a gross word. Um, yeah, the first uh, time I smoked, uh, which is about five years ago now, uh, shit, I got... Uh, I, I wonder if everybody's experiences are similar to mine. Uh, time sort of skipped for me. That was the my first experience getting high. Uh, I did get high the very first time I smoked. It took like three bowls. Uh, I smoked, didn't feel anything, insisted I wasn't feeling anything. I was like, guys, I got to smoke some more. This is, not, this is bullshit. I'm not feeling anything. What is this? And then, uh, just like the firecracker, hit me all at once like a sack of bricks. I sat down on the couch, some community reruns were playing, and then I was like, why is time on, why is time like a uh, CD from the 90s, a, a scratch CD from the 90s, just skipping, 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 skipping. I felt like I was only present for every other second or so. Every, every other second just didn't exist at that point. Uh, which was both a slightly nerve-wracking and wonderful feeling. Um, that's only the second time I've ever felt that experience. The first two times I smoked were the only two times I felt that, that sense of like time dilation, uh, of, of time just sort of uh, being all messed up. Um, I mean, I've, I've had uh, time fast forward and slow down when on, you know, and stuff. Um, Oral Lancaster, that is go a great question. How long is this stream going to last? I don't know. Um, uh, I really don't. Um, I'm already super high. I'm. Let's take a look at how much of this brownie I've got through here. Oh fuck! I'm only about halfway through this brownie. Uh, <laughs> another four hours and fifteen minutes of fun schedule. Oh boy, I'm already super high. We're gonna make it through the brownie. That is guaranteed, guys. We're gonna make it through this brownie for sure. What happens to me if I? Maybe the camera will just be pointed, you know, like at the floor. I actually have a futon mattress right over here in the corner for the dogs. Maybe I just end up on that with the shit pillow at some point and point the camera at me. Who knows? It's going to be a real adventure. That's all I know is this is just going to be an adventure. You're probably going to get knocked out of... <laughs> knocked the fuck out on camera. I'm probably going to get knocked the fuck out on camera. I'm almost certain of it. I'm going to be down there with this poo emoji pillow crying later. And it's all going to be my fault. Mine and nobody else's. Let's take a little another nibble of brownie. Ugh. Man, the longer it stays out, the worse it tastes. Ugh. Thank you, Arnold Palmer. You're my only hope. Ugh. It tastes so bad. It continues to taste bad. All right, guys. Um... Let's let's uh, move on to a new subject, and that is my uh, new favorite company, Canico. I've talked a lot about Canico. I've talked a lot about Canico. But guys, if you have any opportunity to get some Canico products, you've got to try them. They're like magic. They 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 operate on. Um, what about almond milk? You know, I've never actually tried almond milk or any of the different uh, nut milks, almond milks, um, soy milks, um, oh, well, what are the other ones? There, there are tons of them. I, uh, coconut milk, well, that's a different kind of milk altogether. That's not like from flesh. That's just actual coconut milk, um, the juice of coconut. But uh, maybe I should give those a try. But I feel like because I have whatever that galophobia, I can go ahead and be afraid of all milk. So I'm just going to say I'm not going to do any milk. No almond milk for me either. But back to Canico brief, briefly. Guys, Canico is ambrosia. They're, it's the nectar of the gods. Uh, they are the best edible company running right now for sure in terms of potency, consistency, and taste. Uh, I've reviewed uh, most of their products except for their any of their 1,000 milligram line, which why would you ever do that to yourself? I don't think I'll ever review a Canico 1,000 milligram. I don't need a Canico 1,000 milligram. A 500 milligram, uh, as you 
saw in my one of my recent reviews nearly killed me so I don't think I need to try a thousand milligrams for any reason ever <coughs> I can't imagine what it would be like that would be the highest I would ever be if I would do one of those and I'm certain it would taste better than the Corova 1000 milligram too which hurts me to say because I love Corova they used to be my favorite but Canico has supplanted them and you just gotta go um, you just gotta go with who you ever love do I ever vape wax I do. Uh, I use a nectar collector. Um, here are my smoking methods. In terms of when I smoke, the way I smoke uh, most often is I use a volcano, which is hiding behind the galaxy back there in that closet. I'm a volcano vaporizer numero uno. Second is nectar collector, dabbing from nectar collectors. Third would be bud. Fourth would be vape pens. I do them all at different times. Um, but uh, Volcano is my favorite, uh, followed by dabbing via a nectar collector. I find the nectar collector to be the only easy way to dab. Uh, rigs I find too hard, like having to scoop and hold and blow torch all at the same time. Nectar collector is pretty easy. You just sort of like, like hummingbird style. You dip it in and suck it up. That was kind of foul, but that's the way I love it. Um, uh, but I do, I do vape uh, wax through a nectar collector. But my favorite way to vape is, again, through the volcano. And then you get uh, a bunch of AVB as well, which you can use to make firecrackers with, which I've got some in my freezer right now. Um, so, yes, uh, I do vape. Uh, let's see. Uh, guys, uh, let's talk about how shitty LOL Edibles is. I've never had anybody from LOL Edibles contact me. I've, I've talked to people, talked. I've had uh, brief interactions with people from Canico, Buddha's Best, Corova, somewhere else. I've never heard any from anybody from LOL Edibles, probably because I shit talk them so much. I think Ed LOL Edibles is a very large brand. They seem to be everywhere uh, in Southern California, especially like Orange County, Los Angeles County area. Uh, I see them everywhere, but. I'll, largely, they just seem to be a scam to me. Um, their cereals are pretty good uh, in terms of the cereals. Uh, they're lying about their potency. They say they're 400 milligrams. They're not. They're like, you know, 150 or whatever. But they're not bad. Um, I think I like the baked goods better. But uh, other than that, all of their stuff truly doesn't do anything. Um, and it, it's sad that they persist and get to be in business. And that's kind of what uh, I would like to do with wheats is have a little, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of sort of advocacy. And um, maybe you guys could go out there every time you go to a dispensary and just say, like, don't stock LOL edibles in your dispensary because, you know, they don't do anything for anybody. Uh, all the comments on my LOL edibles reviews seem to suggest that most people don't get high from their shit. Um, and they seem to be all over the place. So unless they're have some really sweet d uh, deal with um, you know a distributor or something. I don't know why they're there if they suck so badly. If they're so shitty, uh, I know when I go to dispensaries from now on. If they um, ever ask my opinion, I'll tell them get rid of the yellow edibles, stock something new, put something new in. You'll make your customers happier. Um, Elbow Edibles is shit. Who else is shit? Um, oh, gummies in general, but we don't need to rehash that. Gummies are always bad. But uh, in terms of just people who aren't good, LOL Edibles. Uh, people I feel like need more credit is Punch Bar. Punch Bar makes really, really fucking good uh, edibles. And they're small. They're discreet. Little tiny 225 milligram packages. Um, I don't see them enough. I only see them... I. I think I've seen them at like two dispensaries um, and I just basing on like the traffic of views uh, on my on wheats they don't seem to get watched that often which I assume correlates to how often they get purchased which is a bummer because punch bar is pretty fucking good and I think they deserve better than uh, more sales than they're getting so punch bar give it a chance okay uh, is it time for more brownie uh, I don't know. Probably not. I am already. I'm. I'm already feeling it. I'm. Oh, this is terrifying. This is gonna be rough. I'm gonna have to get something else to drink to finish that too. Oh boy.
Okay. So, um, that's my dog, Squid. He's a Border Collie. Pure Border Collie. We got him because our other original dog that we thought was a great Pyrenees was not and turned out to be a Border Collie and we realized Border Collie is our ball and ass dog, so we got a Border Collie. And, um, he comes from an actual sheep farm. Uh, he was, he's, uh, an actual herding dog from herding stock lines. So probably not good for an apartment, but, you know, that's the way it works. Squid. Up. Say hi, buddy. Yeah, so yeah, he's a dog. Uh, have I ever made my own edibles? Just firecrackers. Just firecrackers or a Lancaster. I'm not talented enough uh, yet to do my own edibles. I would like to, in the future, try to make some of my own edibles, especially just starting with can of butter and working from there. Um, uh, but I have not yet done that, uh, mostly because I find it is... Uh, I actually find it cheaper to just buy edibles than to make your own because if you convert flour prices, and by flour, I don't mean the... Um, Cereal, I mean the, uh, I mean weed. If you convert like weed grammage into like a Corova Black Bar, it's like a Corova Black Bar has uh, 20 grams of dried cannabis in it. It says right here, somewhere. You might be able to see that. Uh, yes, contains 20 grams of dried cannabis. You probably can't read that, but that's what that says. Now, if you do that math and convert it, 20 grams is like uh, uh, almost how much is an ounce like 27 grams uh, grams in an ounce oh it's 28 grams 28.34 grams uh, is in an ounce and an ounce of weed is like $200 and that uh, Corova black bar has 20 grams of weed in it of, uh, of marijuana in it. Um, so if you do the math out, it would cost a hell of a lot more to make your own Corova Black Bar than it would to... Uh, yes, but it would be shitty. It would be... It would be yeah, a shake... A $45 ounce of shake can make a pound of can of butter, but it's going to be shitty better. I mean, you're going to have, like, you know, THC content of, like, 12% or less than that, probably. Um, and that's, you're going to have to eat a lot of edibles of things that don't taste very good to get you high. I, I, I assume it has something to do with, um, with, uh, government regulations in California, which is why edibles are more, in a, a more efficient way, I guess, of getting, um, THC. Maybe you can sell edibles at a cheaper price, even though it contains a comparable amount of cannabis in it that you have to sell at a higher price. I, I don't know. It's never made sense to me. But yeah, so the reason I don't really make edibles is it would be super expensive comparatively. Because again, this has almost a whole, this has two thirds of an ounce of weed in it, is what there's, is what Corova is telling me. Two thirds of an ounce of, of, of cannabis in here, which would cost you, you know, $120 or more easily at a dispensary for, you know, bottom shelf stuff, really. Uh, yes, hopefully that 100 milligram bullshit doesn't get passed. I have not seen anything else about it. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, so I think we're hopefully all in the clear. I don't know. I hope so, because I would be really, really sad if that were the case. Wheats would have to get up, pack up, and move to, like, Oregon or Washington or something where they wouldn't have that cap. Speaking of, do I have any Oregonians or Washingtonians up in this bitch? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that word. Damn it. Up in this... A chat room uh, they use trim probably maybe yeah I probably because uh, they've got to make it more economical in some way or, or they would be going out of business because you can't get 20 grams of weed into a brownie that only costs 40 bucks and not go out of business moon bars are official John Blaze welcome back John Blaze I am feeling blazed myself guys I am getting super high all good. We all thugs in here. That's true. We, we all may be thugs, but we're all also uh, slightly woke thugs. And we don't like going around saying that word all the time. I didn't mean it derogatorily. I, I hope everybody knows that. But we all thugs in here. So, all bone thugs in harmony. All bone thugs in harmony. I said worse words than I did. 
unfortunately. But we all have. We're all young, and we can all forgive each other for our past mistakes. That's the... You the man. Thanks, man. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. And I am fucking high already. <coughs> and we're only an hour in. And I have half a brownie to go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. So yesterday, guys, I reviewed the Cannabis Quencher 200 milligrams. That was just sitting right there. You can look forward to that coming up on a future review. Oh, guys, here's a fun thing. Guess how many reviews I have in the backlog. If you had to guess how many reviews I have ready to hit publish on, sometimes you might notice, like, uh... The reviews, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 2 on, like, June 3rd or something. And you're like, you're seeing that movie really late. Well, I saw it opening weekend. It's because I have a big backlog. Uh, I would tr love to try La Familia candy bars. What? Hey, John Blaze, what part of the country are you in? If I can, if I find those, I will give them a try. Um, so if you, if you are on the West Coast, if you're in California somewhere, let me know. Uh, that work ethic. Yes, that is one way of describing it, uh, Dane, uh, is a work ethic, or it might be a, an addiction. Uh, that might also be it. SoCal, okay, well then I will keep an eye out for La Familia candy bars, because they sound good. Uh, yes, I am probably, um, I mean, I'm certainly um, psychologically addicted to marijuana. Who isn't? Who could, it, who could be eating this many edibles every day and not be somewhat psychologically addicted to weed? Not me, that's for sure. Um, but uh, I can stop anytime I want. No, I really can. I, I, I often take small tolerance breaks and things. Uh, that's work ethic to me. Uh, well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, but yes, I, uh, um, I, I, I take tolerance breaks every now and then, guys. I hope everyone does. It, uh, it saves you some money because uh, if you do edibles every day, your tolerance level gets hit pretty hard pretty quickly. So always got to take those tea breaks. Speaking of tea breaks, it's time to uh, not take a tea break and eat a little bit more of this brownie. Here we go. Another little slice down the hatch. It's going to taste so bad. Who is Gary B? Dane Singh? I don't know who Gary B is. I'm going to Google him right now. Oh, that tastes so bad. Wow. Woo! Gary B. Gary Vaynerchuk. Is an American serial entrepreneur, four-time New York Times bestselling author, speaker, and internationally recognized internet personality. No. He's written hashtag ask Gary, one entrepreneur something something. Crush it. Jab, jab, right hook, and the thank you economy. Wow, those all look like great books. I might have to add them to my, um, one of those to my, uh, Audible cube. Guys, I am, I should let you know, I am an audio fiend, not music. I never n not have, um, when I'm not doing wheats, and even sometimes when I'm doing wheats, I have, uh, now AirPods in my ears, listening to either podcasts or audiobooks. I listen to probably, uh, I don't know, 40 hours a week of audio content through audiobooks and, um, and uh, podcasts. Uh, just my um, two favorites this year. I just had this question. Somebody just asked me uh, what my two favorite audiobooks I listen to this year are. Here's my answer for you guys. Totally recommend both of these. They will blow your minds. You will love them. You will love them. Recommend them to anybody. Debt, The First 5,000 Years by, hold on, the anthropologist uh, David Graeber. Check that book out, Debt, The First 5,000 Years. It is a history of debt. It explains debt. It talks about debt. It talks about what debt is, why we have debt, um, what, what the meaning of debt is, how our whole economy is built on the idea uh, this abstract notion of such a concept as debt and why we believe in this idea, it, it will change your perspective on um, economics. Um, it is truly 
a book of big, big, big ideas. Uh, I love books that are about big ideas. Not pop sci books. I mean, I'm not talking about your like Malcolm Gladwell bullshit or whatever. I'm talking like your uh, books, like you know, your guns, germs, and steels. Like that, that, that like come and plop down and say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna," you know, we're gonna challenge the status quo here. That's what I like. And debt, the first five thousand years, I think, does that uh, with the field of economics. Love it. Read it. Change your change your perspective on um, uh, on some things. So that's my uh, one of my two favorite audiobooks of the year. Uh, the second so far is a great course from the great course called uh, The Story of Human Language. Holy shit. I've always been mildly interested in linguistics, never super interested, uh, mostly because I think learning foreign languages is hard. <laughs> I think it's very hard. But I've been interested in the concept of linguistics and Fuck me if that course isn't amazing. Uh, it's taught by uh, Mike McWhorter. Uh, I think he's an NYU professor, in addition to a bunch of other things. Uh, and he basically just talks about um, how language came to be, and how languages form, and how languages die, and how um, uh, languages uh, continue to evolve, and how written language is the weird thing, and, and most languages is only ever spoken. Uh, let me give you an example of this of this amazing, amazing, amazing anecdote uh, from from one of his lectures, where he's talking about how uh, animals, different animals, have somewhat of the ability to communicate, but they don't necessarily have language. And he uses this story to illustrate it, um, uh, talking about how uh, there are animals have been known to um, uh, even express uh, emotional um, sort of release, cathartic release at moments of aesthetic beauty. And he talks about this instance where bonobos, bonobos, which are like chimpanzees, basically, they're like friendlier, chi they're like chimpanzees that won't rip your fucking face off and that like to fuck each other all the time. So that's what bonobos are. But that bonobos will go with their troops and hold hands and watch sunsets together. Isn't that amazing? The bonobos will hold hands and watch the sunset? I thought it was incredible. Fucking loved it. That's from the story of human language from Mike McWhorter, audiobook from the Great Course. Listen to it, love it, love it, love it. Does anybody know any any good weed audio podcasts out there? Is anybody uh, are there any good like marijuana dedicated audio podcasts like people who talk about marijuana either from a political ethical perspective, maybe even from a business perspective or. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know of any good uh, weed audio out there. I'd love to hear some if, if, if you guys have any recommendations. Whew! Getting higher. Oh, I didn't even finish my sliver of brownie that I was supposed to finish, so here we go. Higher and higher! Thanks, man. Interesting stuff, bro. I know. I could talk about... Well, I am talking about audiobooks all day. That's what I'm doing right now. Getting dug with high. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I have. I'm a fan of getting dug with high. I have, um... I used to watch it every episode of the video podcast, but I haven't watched it recently in like the past year or so. But I, I, there's some classic episodes, like the one where Jack Black basically passes out, greens out on camera, <laughs> fucking amazing. Uh, the one where Pete Holmes basically goes crazy, <laughs> love it. Um, yeah, getting dug with high is great. Uh, Joe Rogan, I know Joe Rogan talks about uh, weed a lot, um, but I don't listen to Mr. Rogan. But yes, both of those are fun. Miami7192 uh, asks, what is the most milligrams of edible you've had at once? And the answer is 1,000. I have done a 1,000, uh, one of these in the past at one time. Uh, but I passed out, and I mean, I didn't pass out, I just couldn't review it an hour later. I was just too high to get in front of a camera and talk. Um, speak on the multiverse, yes! Yes, 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 yes! Oh! Somebody finally asked me to speak on the multiverse. Yes! 
Oh, and Oral Lancaster saw the Reddit post. Fuck those virgins. Um, I hope they're not virgins. And they, they, they had some good points. And unfortunately, that video did have terrible audio. There are actually three videos coming up that also have terrible audio because I switched to my Vive one time and forgot to switch audio outputs and didn't even notice that the audio was terrible because I don't actually even listen to these. I, I, here's a fun uh, behind-the-scenes fact. Uh, I don't actually listen to these myself. I, I n have never watched a week's review all the way through. I just edit the beginnings and the middles and the ends and put in the little jibber jabbers and the flibby flabbies and um, send it out there. So I, I am barely conscious when the audio fucks up and it fucked up for like three reviews. So there are going to be three with shitty reviews. And unfortunately that was just the one uh, that got posted to Reddit was the shitty, um, the shitty audio. As for my beard, you know, some people, some people just don't like a good beard. That's, you know, come see, come saw. Um, speak on the multiverse. So here we go. The multiverse is the greatest thing uh, in science that we don't teach to children. Because if, you, if we taught the concept of the multiverse to children, uh, children would be much more interested in science. And they would be much more, they would have a much more attuned sense of curiosity and would just want to question everything more because it's so fucking interesting. Okay, first of all, real quick uh, recommendation. The greatest book uh, on the multiverse is uh, Our Mathematical Universe uh, by Max Tiegmark, professor at MIT. Uh, he's a cosmo uh, the cosmology professor at MIT. Fucking amazing book. But let's talk about the multiverse. There are actually different levels in the multiverse. Isn't that incredible? So already we're at a pretty ridiculous thing. So there are several levels of the multiverse. The first level of the multiverse is the universe that we live in right now. Uh, we actually exist in a multiverse in this dimension, in this universe, in our own little back backyard. If, if you assume through uh, inflation that our universe is infinite, uh, do you think that math is the ultimate reality or describes the ultimate reality? That is what the book Our Mathematical Universe is all about. Max Tiegmark suggests that math is the ultimate reality, that the universe is inherently just a mathematical superstructure, a, 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 a self-replicating algorithm, basically, is what he suggests. And it's incredible! Oh my god, you got to read it. It's so cool. Um, but, so our first level of the multiverse is if we assume that our universe is a internally inflating universe, you know, just outwardly inflating thing. And, and I was going to say sphere, but it's not uniform. We know that. It inflates at different rates at different spots. Um, but that means that that, that there are technically, uh, that space is technically infinite, right? Um, and within infinite space, that there must be infinite replicas that just, we can't ever access them. So there might as well be Multiverse. They might as well be a different universe because we can't ever get to them because they're farther than the speed of light away from us. They're, you know, if something's, um, you know, uh, so far from us that it's traveling uh, thanks to ex the universe expanding, if it's at a certain point, we can never get to it. Um, it's expanding faster than the speed of light pa away from us because it's expanding at the speed of light plus the universe is, is, is growing, is expanding. So there are these pockets out there in the universe where there are exact replicas of us because if the universe is infinite there are infinite replicas of everything so i'm having this exact conversation just in some other pocket in some other universe and at some other point somewhere right okay that is universe number one that is uh multiverse number one is our very universe contains its own multiverse because it is inherently or it is theoretically infinite or expands towards the infinity and in an in infinite space things must repeat and we must be out there in that infinite expanse over and over and over and over and over again so that's level one of the multiverse uh in our universe but just inaccessible to us because it is expanding out faster than the speed of light from us that's level one level two is the more common multiverse the one that uh you sort of think of from like comic books the true multiverse, the quantum multiverse, which is where um, basically 
any time. Oh shit, how deep do we, down the rabbit hole do we go here? Fuck, okay. We're not going to go super deep down this rabbit hole. Uh, I don't know, man. I think the multiverse is that the universe has the capacity to configure itself into any configuration, and the number of configurations is infinite. I... Th uh, that's true. Uh, we have no evidence of anything past what we can detect, right? I mean, we... Unfortunately, all we'll ever know is what we can know basically right now. We're in an ever-shrinking uh, field of knowledge, uh, which is unfortunate... Uh, way of the, the way the universe works um, just because things the, the, the fact that it expands everything is getting away from us except uh, everything that's in our lo, you know like local super cluster or whatever so we'll, we'll constantly have a smaller and smaller pool of data to assess from um, again this is all theoretical so uh, the the second multiverse is just the quantum multiverse just just the quantum multiverse guys uh, no it's the quantum multiverse which just means so every time the wave function, which the wave function is every time, uh, oh shit, guys, we don't need to talk about a wave function. This is where we get into like Schrodinger's cat, right? Uh, observation, observation. If you observe something, you collapse the wave function and force something to happen. You know, is the cat alive or dead? That's not actually true. That's what's called the Copenhagen interpretation. Observation has nothing to do with it. It's that the cat is both alive and dead because the cat is alive in one universe and dead in the other. And it splits in a process known as decoherence. Um, uh, Brownie, how much Brownie's left? I'd say about a third amateur hour squared. And uh, right now you are uh, here. Uh, the only thing that you missed is uh, the first level of the multiverse expansion ex explanation. We're currently in the second level of the multiverse explanation. We've got the third and most abstract to go. So the second one again is all about collapsing of the wave function. Boom! Collapsed. You know, everything splits and uh, that's what the multiverse, that multiverse is, is every time that a wave function collapses, which happens, you know, constantly trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of times, universes are sort of splintering and splintering and splintering and splintering and splintering. And splintering. Uh, so that's level two, the most common, you know, the one that you think of like in comic books, when you think of like how dumb DC comics are and they have like the multiverse and there's like Earth 2 and Earth 219 and all that shit, that's kind of like multiverse two. Multiverse three is kind of what like Dane, Mr. Singh was uh, suggesting, which is, is, do you think math is ultimate reality or describes ultimate reality? Mr. Tigmark suggests that math is the ultimate reality and that our universe is inherently just a mathematical structure, meaning it's basically nothing but a self-replicating algorithm that it's a big giant computer program sort of that spits out matter, bits, us. We're just, we're just bits basically. And uh, our universe is, is part of a, a, a mathematical superstructure. Uh, what about the ether plane? I don't know anything about the ether plane. What, what is the ether plane, uh, John Blaze? It might be the fourth level of the multiverse. The third level of the multiverse, guys, uh, I, I might even be too high to talk about right now at this particular section. And I, I might be too stupid to describe it in any better detail than that. I totally suggest you just read uh, our... Is it our mathematical universe? Is that what it's called? Hold on, let me look at the title. Max Tegmark, our mathematical universe. Yes, read it. You'll love it. It's great. Um, brains are computers too. Yes, they are. Brains are computers. They are just um, computers that use uh, meat to process instead of uh, transistors. Spiritual planes where thought and energy travel. Uh, I don't know uh, about the ether plane. I don't. So math is universe and experienced reality is multiverse. Oh boy! Wow, that is a uh, poetic way to describe that. Uh, I would have to be a little bit more sober to parse that out to know if I think that's true. But it's on its surface, it sounds fucking great, dude. Oh my god. So math is the universe and experience reality is multiverse. Wow. 
Uh, even if that turns out not to be true, you should definitely get that printed on a t-shirt or a bumper sticker or uh, uh, like a Facebook meme or something. Would you rather have your local WNBA team win the championships this year or receive $5? LOL sounds legit. Oh, shit. Uh, I don't know who my local WNBA team is. Oh, shit. Miami says he would rather receive the $5. I think I would rather take the $5, too, to be honest. Not that I'm disrespecting the WNBA. I have no problems with the WNBA. I Well, I t I'll tell you this. I disrespect the WNBA just as much as I disrespect the NBA, which is to say I don't really care for either. Basketball I doesn't do it for me. I'm not a sports guy, to be honest. A perceiver implies separation. Is the universe separate from itself in any way but illusion? Uh, the universe is definitely not in, in any way what you and I perceive it to be. It is totally uh, an illusion, uh, you know, created in the uh, as a trick of the brain. Uh, who knows what objective reality actually looks like if you can even say it has a look, you know? It doesn't. Uh, color, I mean, uh, none, none of the stuff that that, uh, that that we're talking about or you can perceive actually exists. I mean, like, color doesn't exist. Color isn't real. Color is just a, I mean, it's just a trick. Uh, I, I mean, everything is. Uh, it, it's all our brain just, you know, cobbling together random sensations and spitting out something that uh, we can grab onto and hope to Christ uh, that our, we don't, you know, die in an existential panic. Uh, um, so, uh, have you ever had any trouble with the law due to pot? I have not. Hallelujah. Cross my fingers. Never had any trouble whatsoever. I've never had any trouble with the law, period. Um, so, let alone with pot. Uh, and I hope to continue that trend for the rest of my life. Um, uh, man, it'd be good to spoke with you and crack a cool one with you too. Got some good things to handle though. Later, fellas. Thanks, John Blaze. Take care, man. Yeah, I'm gonna miss John Blaze. He's a good guy. All right, I gotta do some more brownie here. We've been we're one minute and seventeen seconds in. It does not. Very few things. I, I mean, taste doesn't exist outside the brain. Uh, you know. Getting high doesn't get exist outside the brain. Think about what getting high actually is. Uh, it's fucking crazy. It's, uh... Oh, uh, shit, I'm high. Once you start getting all existential, it's hard to, um... It's hard to, uh, you know, sort of right that ship. Once you start thinking about things, it's hard to stop. But God damn, I'm high. Woo! All right, here we go. Ugh. Now you're you're very right, amateur hour squared. Those things definitely do exist. Like, taste definitely exists. Like, molecules manip know how to... No, they don't have consciousness. But, um... Molecules manipulate our taste buds in particular ways that, you know, make things like taste. But... It's... It's hard to say what it is. What... You're just perceiving... Your brain is telling you something that you... Oh boy, that you think is no. You're right. I'm. I'm just gonna say you're right. You're. You're right. I'm just gonna concede on that one. I'm just gonna concede. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Guys, I need more peanut butter M and M's. If you see my gumball machine, I don't know if you've been watching the Wheats videos where it slowly goes down over time. I'm out of peanut butter M&Ms, and the sad part is, those are Super Bowls, 
but they're too big. They don't actually, you can't actually get them to come out. So they're just, they're, they're just decorative. They're aesthetic. Isn't that shitty? For all I know, you're in an asylum in Boston pretending to smoke a joint, staring at a, a beard of a bearded man and giggling, but my brain says I'm watching this stream. You are. Okay, so Amateur Hour Squared, let me tell you about my favorite, uh, I have actually mentioned this in a stream before because it's my favorite topic of anything to talk about, and that is, uh, you know, if you want to get uh, absurdo ad reductum, I think, yeah, uh, about any of these arguments, and it's the most convincing argument, I think, for uh, what the nature of reality is, and that's the Boltzmann brain. Do you guys know what a Boltzmann brain is? And that is, so like, you know, you could say, oh, we're all just in the matrix, man, you know, this, that, and the other. But, or we're in a computer simulation, you know, then the earth is, the world is nothing but a computer simulation, you know, and that is likely to be, that could very well be true. And there's no reason to discount that as a theory, as something that's insane. There is really no reason that we should be discounting that, but that's neither here nor there. But what's much more likely is that it's not a computer simulation that you have to you know add in a whole other civilization that is you know managed to harness that level of processing power and basically has constructed a universe similar enough to ours that it would be able to replicate a universe kind of like ours blah 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 but that you're a Boltzmann brain and that you are simply a collection of you know like sodium and chlorine atoms that have come together in space somewhere for the briefest of moments uh, you know, you've quantumly fluctuated together for just the briefest of seconds to have the consciousness and the memories that you have right now and that you then wink out of existence completely again. So, meaning that every memory that you had, including me saying that you're nothing but a Boltzmann brain, is you having implanted memories from just these atoms that have arranged themselves together in space somewhere, which happens... If you believe in entropy, that's the way it works. Um, uh, so then, boom, you're a bolt, and it comes into existence. It says, oh, I have a mother, a father, a brother, sister, you know, I love to smoke weed. I'm smoking weed right now. I'm watching this stupid, bearded guy talk about weed when I could be doing something more productive. And he's also talking about Boltzmann brain. Isn't that weird? Oh, fluctuate out of existence. Wink, gone. And that could be your entire life. And isn't that crazy? And that is probably what you are. You're probably a Boltzmann brain. Um, so yes, amateur hour squared, you probably are just a, a, a collection of atoms that have flashed into existence because that is the easiest thing to imagine is that you're just, you know, a couple trillion atoms that have arranged themselves in such a way to give you uh, a, a, pat a random pattern of memories that perceive themselves to be a human being on earth with all these things that you know but really it doesn't take much to arrange that because that all fits inside your brain already and we know that through the laws of entropy anything can just sort of flash into existence if you give it enough time things will just pop in and out of existence given enough time through the laws of entropy so it's easy to think that your memories your whole personality could just be a random quantum fluctuation why did the universe make me a lonely stoner now that's a great question for an existential crisis that is an excellent existential crisis question um anybody else get wrecked on 30 milligrams it's been a while since i could get wrecked on 30 milligrams to be honest ben i would love to be able to get wrecked on 30 milligrams um uh, it takes me to get wrecked to get capital W wrecked. It's going to take me about 300 milligrams, 10 times that, unfortunately. I've got that high tolerance. But uh, maybe if I stop smoking for like two weeks, then that 30 milligrams will get me wrecked. Um, amateur hour squared, you're not lonely anymore, buddy. You've got, uh, you've got the... You know, all the other people in the multiverse. Think about all the other yous that are out there think, having this same thought right now. Just send out some cosmic vibes to them. Like as John Blaze would say, get on that ether, ether plane, son, and send some good vibes to them. And they'll send good vibes to you. And I am 
H I G H hi hi hi. Did I spell that right? H I G H H I G H. That does spell hi. That is correct. I am probably 800 milligrams in, I would say, of this brownie. So whoopee doodle do. And guess what? It's only been an hour and a half, so I have eaten most of it probably in the past half hour too and it takes me about two hours to peak and there's still 200 milligrams left guys shit has barely even started to get wacky and this is gonna get uh, i'm gonna get so fucked up it's unbelievable what why am i doing this uh have i ever seen the performance of just one person at jim's henson's uh no but i will look that up right now Just one person. Playing. Deep enough and strong enough. Oh wait, that's gonna sound really. Uh, let me route this through my headphones. Hold on. I gotta hear this shit. Set as default device. Believes in you. Oh man! Hard enough and long enough. Before you knew it, someone else would think he can do it. I can do it. Making it. Wow. To hold I'm watching it right now. It's kind of wonderful. Deep enough and strong, strong enough. Believe in you. It's kind of sad, dude. There's bound to be some other person who believes in Wow, this is kind of sad. It's kind of like bumming me out, man. But it's beautiful. People you can say believe in me. Jim Henson was a cool dude. He was a genuinely good guy. He was like a he was like a, a Mr. Rogers level good dude and it seems that uh, in at, in his death he has uh, continued to inspire many man what a good dude who doesn't like good dudes by the way oh fuck am I I saw Spider-Man Homecoming yesterday anybody seen Spider-Man Homecoming yet uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, I'd say it's the second best Spider-Man behind the second Spider-Man. It's the second best Spider-Man behind Spider-Man 2. I would go Spider-Man 2, Spy uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3. That's the Spider-Man list of Spider-Mans, in my Spider-Man opinion. Um, I also last weekend saw the big sick guys, which holy shit is it? It's as good as all those reviews, obnoxious reviews, and like all your, you know, like woke friends. They're like, dude, you gotta see the big sick. You gotta see the big sick. It's really good. It's really good. You gotta see it. It's really good. Well, I'm telling you, you gotta see the big sick guys. It's really good. It's really good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The big sick. Give it a watch, man. Oh. If you think the Jim Henson thing is heartwarming, uh, Amateur Hour Squared, which it was, uh, you gotta give the big sick a chance. You gotta watch it, bro. You gotta watch it, bro. It's good. Uh, it'll also warm the cockles of your heart. Um, it's great. Uh, big sick. Guys, uh, if you want, uh, let me give you a number. Uh, let's see. What my number high is. Oh, boy. Uh... Oh boy, I would say right now I am at a solid 8 point. Ooh, my cockles. I've heard the name, but what is it about? It is about a man. Uh, if you've seen uh, the hilarious HBO program, um, uh, Silicon Valley, Dinesh, 
it's it, it's his true life story of him and his now wife when he was a stand-up comic in Ch Chi Town in Chicago. His uh, wife got his then girlfriend, then ex-girlfriend, gets very very sick, and he uh, goes and um, romantic things happen and sad things happen and happy things happen and stoner things happen there there's pot in the movie and, and ray romano who i mean like what a great movie there's weed and ray romano in one movie shit it's better than welcome to mooseport and who would have ever thought a sentence would have been uttered that something is better than welcome to mooseport because if you ask me welcome to mooseport is pretty much the best movie ever made. I've never seen it, but I just imagine when I am 65 and I'm ready to watch a movie like Welcome to Mooseport, I imagine at that point I'll be like, fuck, yeah, this movie is so good. Because I assume nobody who's less than 48 has ever seen Welcome to Mooseport. Do I listen to Run the Jewels? Uh, no, I uh, one time um, was a college DJ when I was in like grad school and we played a lot of Run the Jewels but I uh, not a big Run the Jewels I'm not a big music guy to be honest I have very bad taste in music I have like listened to like one album obsessively for a year at a time currently I'm listening to Jason Isbell's The Nashville Sound over and over and over and over but most of us listen to podcasts and audiobooks um oh shit Black Panther. I, I saw Baby Driver. I just Baby Driver was amazing. Uh, I didn't know they had done the music or had done some music for it. Yeah, I, I know of them, man. They're super cool. Uh, it's just I, I don't have good taste in music, unfortunately. I have shitty taste in music. Um, as I said, I, I mostly listen to audiobooks and podcasts. When I do listen to music, it's like again, I listen to like one album all year long because I'm I'm boring. Um, and that right now is Jason Isbell and the National Sound. Jason Isbell and the National Sound available on Apple Music and Spotify right now on all streaming platforms and maybe Tidal. Who knows? Who, who the fuck actually subscribes to Tidal? Check it out. Jason Isbell and the National Sound. That's Jason Isbell and the National Sound. Hey, Jason, if there any if anybody out there knows Jason Isbell, dumb, I'm fan. That's Jason Isbell and the National Sound. It's available on all streaming platforms right now, except Tidal. I don't know. Who, who the fuck knows anything about Tidal? Um, I don't, and I am high, actually I don't even know anything about Spotify, I don't have Spotify, I have Apple Music, fuck Spotify, no actually I think Spotify is probably better, I just get Apple Music because they have that family, pl they got that family plan for, the, for that good price, so I just do that, and you can find like Apple, uh, you can find iTunes gift cards for 20% off all the time, so it's really cheap, that's why I have Apple Music, um, in case you guys were wondering. You probably weren't. Um, but, because I'm super high, I get to tell you about my opinions about Apple Music v. Spotify. And my opinion is, I don't give a shit. You go with whatever one you like. Just not Tidal. Well, actually, you can do Tidal, too, because I don't know anything about Tidal. The only thing I know about Tidal is that it's supposed to be the butt of all Apple, or all streaming music jokes. So, if... If I'm going to make a joke about streaming music, title needs to be the punchline. That's all I know. And I also know... Not much else right now. So, uh, this shirt, guys, that has pineapples and with sunglasses on it, I found at Marshall's for $12. What a deal. What a deal. Oh, what a world we live in. And I I notice nobody, and I'm too dumb to know how mirrors work. Um, what's my favorite cannabis musician? Willie Nelson. The OG cannabis musician. Actually, I, I don't know. Uh, I, my hair has a braid in it right now, too. This was for Reddit. This braid. Showing my grooming techniques. My partner did it. 
Oh boy, what's what? Who is Marshalls and TJ Maxx and Ross the real running MVPs? Hell yeah! Actually, a new one just moved into Long Beach. Um, that's like a more. It's like Ross. If Ross was in Baghdad, Iraq, it's called Didi's Discounts. One just opened up in Long Beach. It mostly just had like empty racks and um, abandoned small children and um, uh, discount underwear. But I assume at one point it had great deals on great clothing. But uh, I don't, normally don't go to Marshall's TV, J Max or uh, Ross. But I needed some cheap uh, dog beds, and that's the best way. That's the best place to go for dog beds. That is a pro tip. Oh, well, I'm out of drink. How am I supposed to finish this without a drink? Oh, I might have to leave for a second to get something else to drink. Oh fuck! I'm getting so high, guys. Oh boy. I am getting really crazy high. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Corova, if you're out there, you make really strong potent products. Uh, this is this is this is really it's really amazing what you're doing to me right now. You're really doing wonderful things for the planet. Persevere, persevere, persevere. Maybe, maybe. Uh, cannabis lean, this syrup tinctures. I have tried one cannabis syrup. That is a review that will be coming up. I tried one called Siver or something. Can no cannabis. Cannabis. I did try a cannabis. I won't spoil the review, but that will be coming up in my 25 or so backlog of reviews at some point. Um, out of nine yet? Uh, ye, uh, close. I would say an eight five, eight five, and rising eight five and. <laughs> this roller coaster is at a ninety degree angle, baby. We are going straight up, and I have no idea what happens when I get to the apex. What I'm looking down at, is it a ninety degree drop? Or is it going to be one of those ones with like the nice corkscrew bends where you kind of get let down gently? Because if it's one of those ones like the Hulk in Universal Studios where you go straight up and then just like... Well, we could all be in trouble. We could all be in trouble if that's the case. Oh, uh, boy. Nice. Uh, that was the name of your syrup? Slactivus? Slactivus. Buckle up. <laughs> Uh, what was your old bad habit, if you don't mind sharing? I probably could pick up um, on your innuendo if I were more sober, but I'm not, and I can't pick up on pretty much any innuendo right now, so if you're willing to divulge, I'm willing to listen. This has been Dr. Fraser Crane on You Something Something Seattle. Something, something. Fraser Crane, Seattle, Seattle. I never thought in my entire life, guys, I would be at a point where I would be on a microphone on the internet getting high, talking about the experience. Isn't that a crazy world we live in? That's a crazy world. That is a really crazy... We live in a crazy world. We do. I, 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 it is crazy. Um... Do you guys Twitch, or is YouTube the place to be for streaming? I don't know. Like, when I'm doing my live stuff, should I be on YouTube, or should it be on Twitch, and then should I just put the video on YouTube? I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm not this. I'm not a social media um, uh, guru, even though I went to J school. I did not focus on the social media side of J school. That's what we call it. J school, baby. J school. Um, uh, so yes, I, even though I went to J school, you think I would know about good social media habits, and I did actually take a class on 
medical writing for the internet which talked about how to you know some good social media practices but I don't really remember it it wasn't my favorite class to be TBH uh, you say YouTube I'd say YouTube you say YouTube hey it's my dog hey my dog's here that's Nart otherwise known as Newt she's a good dog you'd like her no, maybe not. She's kind of actually an asshole to some people. If she doesn't know you, she can be a real asshole. There, she's coming in right now because of this time delay. Uh, boy, I am high. H-I-G-H, high. I'm hoping I'm still spelling that correctly. I think I am. I think I am. I think I am. Should I play a video game and stream it right now? Is that what the... That's what cool kids do. How do I do that? Uh, let's see. Plus... If I went to output sources, game capture, auto detect. If I shrunk this down, let's experiment together. Whoop! Outputs, sources. I kind of want to play my favorite video game of all time in front of you guys. Well, not of all time, but my favorite video game that I'm playing right now. And the game that I could just talk and 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 talk about. It's a game that everybody should be playing because it often goes on Steam sales for super cheap. It's a little game called Off World Trading Company. Now, if I could hear you guys, I'd love to be hearing the clickety clacks of your keyboards as you go to Metacritic and go, what is this game you are talking about? Off-world trading company, I've never heard of such a thing. Off to Metacritic, I go. So that's what you should be doing right now. And you will then see that it has a surprisingly low Metacritic of 78%, even though it is a wonderful, wonderful game. Ah, see, somebody gave it 100 um, oh man, what are these dumb reviews? Here, let's listen to the Quarter of the Three's review. Quarter of the Three, uh, great publication, by the way. I'll make my picture bigger while uh, I wait to decide what we're doing. There you go. Whoop! We're bigger again. Quarter of the Three says, um, it is every bit as thrilling as something with constant explosions. It's the sort of game you'll be thinking about at work. It's the sort of game you might want to try online. It's the sort of game with a campaign you can play and replay and replay some more. It's the sort of game with so many settings and options and variables that you might never need another RTS. Doesn't that sound wonderful? But the most important thing about it is don't ignore the options, bells and whistles and doodads. It is that that fundamental gameplay, son. It is that core gameplay that is so, 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 so tight. Oh, it's like, it's like if you took an Excel spreadsheet and stuck it in a blender, ground that spreadsheet down into its barest essentials and said, you play the shit, son. That is what Offworld Training Company is, and it is amazing. It is the best spreadsheet simulator you've ever seen in your life. You buy low, you sell high, you work the markets, you sabotage that shit, you get all them resources, you corner that market, you oh, oh boy, your your opponent need us needs uh your opponent needs uh water? Too bad, you got all the claims, son. You need water? You're gonna have to buy it from the market. You're gonna have to buy it from me, son. You're gonna have to buy it from me now. Oh my god. Off-world trading company. It's so incredible. I play it a million times a day. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Sage is in the house. Welcome, Sage. We're just talking about off-world trading company and then I might 
gonna have to try streaming it because I'm gonna have to do something to try to stay awake because I'm about to pass out. You're coming, Sage, at the moment where it's like, oh God, is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? So maybe what I'm gonna have to do is shrink my skull down, get to some off world, play it, let you guys say like, oh God, look how good this game is. You need to get it so we can all play on Steam together and say hallelujah and have fun and talk about the markets and all that fun stuff. Uh, I do. I don't use it, but I do have uh, a Twitch. I, I think it's just wheat. But I could do it on YouTube, too, I think. I think. Um, let me uh, try something right now. Let's go to Steam Library Offworld Trading Company. You've got to give this game a try, guys. Go ahead, go ahead, and uh, go ahead and straight up get on. Uh, leave my channel. Leave me. Go, go, go watch some Offworld Trading Company uh, videos right now. Like. I, I'm 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 bullshit. I suck. What you need to be doing is watching YouTube videos of Off World Trading Company and then playing with me online because it's incredible. And you guys, if you have that part of your brain that likes these kind of games, like uh, this kind of experience, like a heart, just like getting your gut punched with numbers, crunchy numbers, and just formulas and oh economic simulator goodness then this is for you if however you like fun and enjoyable things and having a good time and uh, just enjoying yourself and just loving life and you know having a good time playing a video game and just 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 generally just you know just being a just being a good guy and having a good time I would not get off road training company because it's it'll corrupt you it's it's not fun um oh that sucks sage are you sage I, you don't have to tell me specifically but what part of california are you in uh um or northern california southern california <laughs> i guess the only other part is central california um uh because Corova, I know, in my sort of area, if one dispensary doesn't have it, you can usually hop to another and find it. Um, so I, I just wonder if it's more sparsely dispersed where you're at. Um, so, Off-World Trading Company. Again, it is not a game you should play if you like to enjoy video games. It's a game to play if you uh, are sort of a sadist. Okay, so... Let's see. Alt tab. Oh boy, there I there it is. Okay, okay, we're sort of uh, Orange County. You're in Southern Orange County. Okay. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate that I wouldn't be delivered there because I'm, uh, I guess I'm more uh, Southern LA County, Northern Orange County, and um, and it seems to be pretty pretty widely dispersed up here. But hopefully it's just a, it's just a temporary dry spell and you're going to get uh, your Corova sent to you soon. But, if you sage, if you haven't, if your dispensaries are out of Corova and they happen to have Canico, give Canico a try. Uh, but I know Canico is much, much less widely dispersed than Corova. I have only ever seen it at two dispensaries, I think, uh, out of you know like many. Um, so uh, unfortunately, it's not as widely dispersed as I would like. But if you if you ever have the opportunity to ask your dispensary if like if they ever like oh what products do you like tell them to recommend canico man because I, I hate to sound like a show uh i, I wish i were showing for them canico if you want to pay me money 
to tell people that your products are awesome, weedsreviews at gmail.com. I'll do it, at, you know, with ethic, ethically, of course, I'll tell people, and I'll, but I'll be happy to show for you. But I'm happy to show for, for them for free for now because their products are that good. But, um, yeah, tell your, tell your dispensary, like, hey, guys, get some Canico products because they deserve the exposure, I think. Um, Canico, if you're out there, because I know you've been out there before, keep up the good work. Um, sorry to sound like a shill. Again. Uh, okay, off-world trading company. Let's just do a single player. Let's just do a skirmish. Boy, I can't play this. I can't talk about this game right now. That'd be fucking crazy, dog. Maybe later. Because I'm just too high. I did try to explain that shit. Woo! Woo! That'd be so crazy. That'd be crazy nuts. Look how red my eyes are getting. Oh my god. I am getting high. Um, oh boy. And, oh uh, boy. Um, if you have, uh, oh shit. Okay, keep me focused. I gotta keep focused. Keep focused. Keep focused. Keep focused. What? What, uh, what, what can I play instead? What do the kids like? They like, uh, Overwatch, right? Overwatch? Oh, I'm so high. Oh, shit, I have Overwatch. I suck at it. I was good, I was okay on console, but I suck at PC version, but I have it. I can play Overwatch. Oh, God, I just have to stay focused. I did say I'll probably die, so I've got to stay here, and I might die. Guns, guns. You want a game with guns? Guns, 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 guns. <laughs> okay, uh, I can play some Overwatch. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Amateur hour squared. I'm, I'm back. I'm focused. I'm focused. Focused. Um, somebody said something about guns. That's all. I. That's the last thing I remember. Somebody said something about guns. Smoke a bowl for me, man, please. It'll keep me um, keep me on the straight and narrow. Uh, Blizzard app. I hope my PC can handle all this action. I've got a good. I've got a 1070 GPU, and my CPU, while a little bit older, was nice for 2000. Fourteen, I think. Let me see if I can find out my infos. All right, guys, because no one asked, I have 16 gigs of RAM, uh, an i7 4820, 3.7, not overclocked even though I could, but I won't because I don't know how, and I don't care to find out how for now. Running Windows 10, and I have a uh, 1070 GPU. So there you go. Now you know. But my exploit just said I was experiencing high CPU usage, and it also said you suck, which I thought was harsh, but who knows why it said that. Maybe maybe it's just a uh, How much do I have left to eat? How much would you estimate? Oh, uh, let's pull up this camera. I need to pull up the exploit here. I would say I've eaten 80%. Four-fifths, if we want to get L least common denominator about it. The least common denominator? That's not what that means. Oh, shit. Woo! Overwatch. Trying to do this trying to do this people like it but it says paused progress will be saved if you exit what's paused you think that's a quarter left Miami oh god a quarter well I guess that's not a whole lot more than 20% but oh shit 
it sounds a lot worse that I have to eat 5% more than I thought before. Oh, shit. I will eat it all. I'm going to have to um, get something else to drink at some point, so I'll have to, like, leave the mic for a little bit. But I won't end the stream. The stream will keep running. You'll just have to look at my, uh, I believe somebody said, ISIS-ish background, which I also thought was a little harsh, if a little funny. Um, I also think it was a comment on my beard, if a little harsh, but also a little funny. A little uh, uncomfortable in terms of uh, racial politics, but um, still pretty funny, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to eat some more of that brownie. It's pretty scary. Tw or a quarter left, because yes, I'm officially at a nine. I am definitely at a nine already, and there's a quarter left. And we're only an hour and 55 minutes in. <laughs> Put the dog in the seat while we wait. If the dog would stay, I would try it. But I don't think that dog's going to stay. The dog's a dick. Not to be... <sighs> Shut up. I suck. Whew, I am high. Um, I'll have to get something to drink, and I'm going to finish this in just a moment. Uh, give me one second. Uh, let me play, play the Jeopardy music while I'm gone. Oh my god, guys, now you get to know the embarrassing truth that I was wearing gym shorts the entire time! I'm often wearing gym shorts, which is really embarrassing to admit out loud. Better than sweatpants! Bet, bet, better, better than sweatpants! I guess. And only because it's hot. Because if it was cold, I'd probably be wearing sweatpants underneath. But don't tell anybody that. Don't tell anybody that. Don't tell anybody that. <clears throat> Man, I just noticed uh, upon leaving here and speaking to uh, someone else how hoarse my voice had already gotten. Uh, two hours of straight speaking has done um, a lot to my voice, uh, apparently. If I fail out, it might actually be for that reason, and who knows? Give up, <laughs> give up on life pants. Yes, somebody understands the true nature of sweatpants, that they are give up on life pants. Um, uh, but you can, I only wear my give up on life pants when it's warm. I swear I hear traffic coming to this mic. Is my gain really sensitive? Now I'm super sensitive about audio. I'm just so sensitive because, like, those guys were really harsh, man. Really mean. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being mean. There we go. That sounds better, I think. Does that sound better? Hey, oh. All right. Uh, I've got a half a bottle of Diet Snapple, peach flavored. And some of this brownie left. All right, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. My dog's back. She just let herself in. She's rude like that. And she just let herself out. What a... Mm. 
I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Okay. Um, that was about half of that. So I've got about half left to go. I'll do that in just a little bit. I'm gonna see what's going on with this Overwatch game that keeps telling me it can't load. Let's try. Uh, let's try again. Whew. Can't get that taste out of my mouth. Might have to put up on my give up on life pants because I love that phrase now. Was that taken from somewhere? Amateur hours squared. Give up on life pants. I feel like I've heard that phrase somewhere. Not to suggest that you wouldn't be clever enough to come up with something as good as that, but I feel like I've heard that somewhere. What the H, Overwatch? Why are we waiting? Ah, adventure time. Adventure time. Yes, that sounds right. Oh, now Overwatch is doing something. It's downloading, initializing. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Uh, we can talk about, uh, we've talked about the multiverse already. We're talking about Boltzmann brains. Um, we could talk about, um, we're talking about Kanako. Uh, oh, we could talk about Adventure Time. Uh, I've seen like the first three seasons of the show, and it is remarkable that that is a show for children. That that show is primarily targeted at children. Aliens! Aliens! We can talk about aliens. We can talk about aliens. We can talk about aliens. We can talk about why, why, why. Uh, they're the Fermi Paradox. The kind of scary Fermi Paradox, which is why haven't aliens contacted us? Or why haven't we found aliens? Why haven't, why don't we know about them? Uh, because it seems like we should, theoretically. Uh, right? Uh, because if the universe is as old as we think it is, you know, we're still sort of in a young period of the universe, you know, relatively speaking, we're actually in a very young period of the universe. But it's been around long enough, certainly long enough, billions of years long enough, actually, for other intelligent life to have formed in different places in the universe. And theoretically, if it were possible for that life to uh, um, come up with some sort of you know, interstellar travel, uh, well, we should have seen them because enough time has passed and enough that there should be enough civilization or enough interstellar aliens out there, to, you know, to visit all kinds of periods or spots in the universe because if theoretically they would be abundant enough because the Milky Way is just that big. There are that many stars. And we know that now, especially, that stars... Um, Tons of stars have habitable planets on them. So, but why isn't there life out there everywhere? What's causing it? What's causing life not to be um, sort of, you know, abundant in the universe or intelligent life? It's kind of a scary thing. And there are a couple of big theories as to why that is. Either they are smart enough to stay away or are too dumb to make contact. It's the latter that I would be most afraid of. Uh, the, the, the most scary... I think the most scary alternative is that it's just not possible that interstellar becoming like an interstellar species is is beyond the laws of, of, of physics, meaning no civilization, no matter how intelligent, can do it. No matter how much planning is involved, no matter how good you are, it's gonna it's impossible. For to travel amongst stars in any real way um, because the li limits of physics prevent it from happening. That's really scary to think about. That's really scary to think about because it just basically means, you know, we're all, uh, everybody's doomed no matter what, you know, um, b because your star is going to explode at some point and you're never going to get out from where you're at. So it's a really scary prospect, I think, to, um, uh, to suggest uh, to, if that's why. Now, some of the other ones are basically just that it's sort of like a Star Trekian prime directive thing, right? Like, uh, uh, there are aliens out there, but they just don't come into contact with uh, 
sort of primitive-ish aliens until they hit some kind of technological breakthrough and then you know then then you're invited into whatever sort of you know um larger federation or whatever uh that seems far-fetched to me but who knows maybe uh there's also the predatory idea what if we're the first yes but it doesn't really make sense for us to be the first miami that's the problem it's because there it's more than enough time has passed uh, and in conditions would have been more than ripe enough in millions of places in the Milky Way for uh, this exact scenario to have already arisen, but seemingly hasn't. Or we, So it just doesn't make sense for us to be the first. The chances of us being the first are so, so low because... The conditions for you know this to have happened would have happened millions, if not billions, of times already in the Milky Way. So it's just like it doesn't seem like we would be the first. Ugh. Back with backwoods. Welcome back, Dana Singh. I am a lot higher than the last time you saw me. Here's how much brownie I've left right now. Not a lot. I'm and my voice is starting to give after two hours and six minutes. My voice is slowly starting to say, screw you, buddy. Screw you for tr doing this, you stupid son of a bitch. Um, so, uh, Miami, to answer your question, I don't know. It's possible that we're the first. It is possible, but it's very, very unlikely. And it makes... Uh, oh, nice, dude. Nice, gonna have some fun dancing. Woo woo. Um, oh boy, sorry. I I don't normally make dumb noises like that arbitrarily. I'm I'm really high. Um, as you can tell, I'm starting to ramble. I mean, I've been rambling for a while. I'm glad somebody asked me about aliens. Uh, I could continue to talk about aliens. Uh, like why do all aliens in media look like humans you know they're probably if aliens existed they wouldn't look anything at all like us i mean aliens we keep saying aliens 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 i think what we mean is uh obviously when we're saying aliens is intelligent life because i think aliens if but just by the definition aliens like you know life i think we're gonna find that's pretty abundant actually I think we'll probably find life on Mars, meaning microbial life at some point, or evidence thereof that there was microbial life at some point. It just seems like life is, um, at least on, at least according to the conditions here on Earth or the way Earth works, uh, life uh, is a pretty tenacious thing. It seems to want to form. I know Mars is very different than. Um, than Earth, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if if somewhere we didn't find some microbial life on Mars uh, at some point. But but uh, intelligent life is a whole other matter. I mean, it, it could be it could very be well be true that, um, and this is another theory for the Drake equation that uh, th that we are sort of the first, but first and only that we are such in a freakish anomaly like it seems unlikely but it could be true that 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 humans really are that rare that humans are really that sort of special uh it would be very scary because it it would suggest how utterly precious uh intelligent life is and it, you know we're about to destroy it uh we're about to you know end end that uh grand experiment i i I think here on Earth, uh, before too much longer, uh, if we continue uh, a course, um, uh, but what we don't, yeah, we definitely don't hope that humans, that intelligent life is incredibly rare. Uh, but currently, the evidence sort of suggests that intelligent life is insanely, insanely, insanely rare, um, which is very scary because it means it's utterly precious and. Uh, I don't think we treat it as such here on Earth, which is unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Um, whew. 
would I send bacteria to an Earth-like planet? Would I uh, geo-populate? Would I geospore a planet? Of course, sure. I'd love to. Yeah, if there was if there was an Earth-like planet out there that had um, oceans and uh, terrest, you know, both uh, oceans and uh, liquid water and uh, terrestrial. Well, just if there was a planet out there that had liquid water, simply liquid water. Uh, Whatever and you know, in in whatever way, uh, even no matter what the atmosphere was, as long as there was liquid water there, uh, you know, H two O, I would germinate that planet in a second with human bacteria. Because why the hell not? Uh, what do you? Uh, I I guess I I know that uh, you know an, an ethicist might uh, scold me for my uh, cavalierness for how. Easily, I say like, "Oh yeah, why, why the fuck not?" Because I know there are, are some ethical implications for, for doing something like that. But it it seems to me like, you, um, do everything you can, that that life is the goal. That life is uh is a good thing. Um, and uh, it should be encouraged. Life should be encouraged. Uh, when it doesn't, you know, crowd out other life, or when it doesn't affect, um, you know. But but when if if a place is sterile, yeah, I I can't I couldn't fathom a reason why not. Uh, so, um, pangenesis theory meaning um, that the Earth is populated by uh, has been populated by bacteria from an asteroid. I I don't see why not. I mean that's it's just as likely as anything else. Uh, if that's what you mean, um, uh, I I would. I could totally believe that we're just bacterial um, um, hitchhikers from an asteroid, you know, that or you know tardigrades or whatever. Not even bacteria. We could have even been more involved in that. That that sounds totally valid to me. It doesn't obviously doesn't solve the problem of where life comes from. It just solves the problem from where life comes from on Earth, which to me, you know, uh, it seems like we're gonna get pretty close to that in a lab pretty soon you know we can do it with like proteins and amino acids and things and it seems like you know uh, it's not going to be too much longer before we can i don't know that 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 sounds grandiose that sounds like a bigger claim than 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 i i know that that that, that can be made but but i wouldn't be surprised oh my god my voice is really starting to go um uh Yes, it does. It does. It does. Oral Lancaster. It, I, it's not because it's not because I am um, speaking or, or getting more high. It's just because my voice is uh, is going out. Uh, I've just been talking for so long. Uh, it's been a while since I've. <laughs> oh, it's going, Betty. It's going. Um, I'm. I've gotten oddly. Um, uh, sort of um, sedate well, not oddly sedate of course you would get sedate but my answers to questions have been less um, have been more sort of um, oh shit I can't think of a good word for it uh, have been far more serious have been far more um, sort of senatorial I've been uh, than they have been sort of fun I, I don't know I, I am so high are computers or animals intelligent life? Uh, that is an incredible question. Uh, it's obviously a semantic question, which does not in any way imply it's a bad question. Uh, not, not at all. Um, uh, I would say that... Uh, shit, I don't know. Uh, I think we'll find out with computers soon. Pretty soon, probably. Um, computers do all kinds of crazy things already. Um, we're we're probably not far off from a singularity-like event. Uh, I would think. Um, I, I I I hate to give uh, Kurt Spotwile or however you say his last name credit, but it seems like the pace of AI growth in the past like two years has been fucking nuts and it is nothing but 
an exponential growth and what we're already doing is kind of crazy. Our munchies kicking in. You fucking know it. Mm. I know it's just rude, but that's good. That's some good shit. In California, my homeland, dog, it was only regular Cheetos. Out here, holy shit, these are hotter than I thought they were going to be. Whew, I'm going to start sweating. Oh, God. I better stop. Lord have mercy. I'm a sweater. Okay. Oral Lancaster. I I have a confession. It is story time. Please, 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 please. Do not uh think of me in a bad way in any way, shape or form. Um one time the dog you saw right there did get high accidentally. She's um 99.99% of the time super good with like food, doesn't go after it or anything. Boy, there's flaming hot Cheetos, still hot. Ooh. I thought I liked them. Wow. I'm gonna have to have some peanut butter MMs. So one time I had an edible and I left it on the uh, coffee table like the last third of a uh, 150 milligrammer and it was a cookie and she got it oh no it was less than that it was it was she got maybe 20 milligrams total um, of THC but it was it was enough to make her um, very high she was very high I felt very very guilty um, I felt incredibly, incredibly uh, guilty uh, when it happened. She seemed not to mind too much. She drooled a lot. She drooled a hell of a lot. She's mostly pretty sleepy. Her eyes were like this. Then she would sleep. Then she would get up for a while and kind of like want her, sort of want her belly rub but not really and it lasted about six hours so yeah I got I got her high ones accidentally please don't judge me I felt terrible I definitely didn't mean to do it peanut butter m and to cool me down I have never heard that before Dane Singh that is a fun factoid I did not know that there was any anthropo anthropological evidence that Dogs were domesticated with cannabis. Huh. I'll have to do some uh, Googling later. Check out some science journals. A 250 milligram crowbar. Oh my god. Wow. Um, how, uh, how big is your dog, Oral Lancaster? How many like pounds is your dog? Well, that doesn't surprise me. We, uh, we've done a lot of things to dogs over the centuries. That's why uh, they are the way that they are. We've done a lot of cool things, but it, it's resulted in uh, dogs being the sort of awesome creatures that they are. Sorry, PETA. Don't judge me for that comment, PETA. Oh, it's a little dog, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, Oral Lancaster, do you ever take your dog to Rosie's? The dog beach? I know, it's crazy that, that dogs get um, 
like uh, benzos and shit now. It, 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 it's nuts. I think pets, uh, dog and cat, thanks to uh, millennials' reticence to have children, we're spending a lot of money on pets. Uh, millennials are. Uh, and I think, you know, 20 years from now, we're going to look back and be like, oh my god, you know, like, we were giving dogs, you know, pills for anxiety and selling them shirts that were supposedly um, keeping them calm during thunderstorms and blah, 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 and, and realizing how many of these things are just utter scams and just, you know, complete bullshit. But who knows? Right now, we're in a bubble. Oh, cool, dude. Yeah, I go to Rosie's like, um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> probably ten times a week or something. I've got three dogs. Got to keep them busy. I assume the answer is yes, Miami, but I ass it doesn't really matter. Because you are the one that can, you're the a hundred percent in control of the supply. They don't even understand what supply is, so they can become addicted and instantly. I mean, you can kill them that way by with making them go through withdrawals. But yeah, they can become addicted to like cocaine and I know cocaine. I I I, I assume opiates too. I don't know though. Because they do all kinds of. Um, addiction experiments on different animals, including dogs, and they get them addicted to substances, including squirrels. I've heard in, uh, from a study, I think can get so addicted to cocaine that they will starve themselves to death. Basically, like if you give them a water bottle with like a cocaine drip in it. Um, they will drink from that, like, water bottle, basically, instead of eating, even. It's so addictive to them that they will just continue to, um, consume the, uh, cocaine and forego eating completely and will eventually even starve themselves to death. That's how, like, powerful those, uh, substance abuse can be in them, or so addiction can be. Um, you know, humans can control that, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, substance abuses can definitely develop in, in, in dogs. Have I ever popped a Xan? No, I have never done pills. Um, the only other drug I've ever done is mushrooms, and I've, I think I've told this story once. I did it, like, uh, actually just a couple months ago and did not really get high. I uh, just felt my senses slightly uh, heightened. I just had, I think it was Dane who told me that's sort of the optimal first experience. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was my first and only experience with uh, any other drug. Uh, I'm not necessarily opposed, I'm not opposed to other drugs. It's just I've always found uh, weed to be uh, more than... Uh, more than sufficient so far when it comes to intoxicants. And I don't need to get addicted to anything else, right? Um, oh, these peanut butter M&Ms are delicious. That was what was in that other half of that gumball machine. Notice there are like six left. I also have no idea how much money's in there because I really did put quarters in there and I haven't taken them out yet. No clue how much is in there. I'm just gonna wait till I can't put any more quarters in. I totally agree with that uh, sentiment, Dane. Um, that is uh, the proper way to think about it. Um, 
I hoped I had gone in prepared for an intense experience, uh, but did not get it my first time. Uh, if the opportunity presents itself to do it again, I would not w uh, hesitate a second to do it. Um, but the opportunity has just not... I haven't really sought it out, but um, it just hasn't come along since. Uh, but if it does, I'll, I'll do it for sure. That's the only other drug I, I feel like I need to do. Um, and, and I'm just... Uh, I have an intense curiosity about uh, mushrooms just because I've heard um, that it can do sort of wonderful things, uh, sort of wonderful therapeutic things. Um, in Oral Lancaster, I could not even begin to imagine eating a thousand milligram Canico and then taking acid. Oh my God. Uh, it would be like me trying to come up with a metaphor right now. Uh, it would be that difficult um, for how crazy it would be. I'm not sure what I meant by what I just said, but I'm high. Um, I'm at like a 10. Yeah, like right there. Um, uh, I'm definitely feeling it now in the body as well as the head. Um, I feel like... Uh, I definitely am having not the time skipping thing I was talking about earlier, but the sort of time sort of slow down. Um, it doesn't. Uh, I feel sort of separated from from normal normal time. Um, um, it's crazy that. Uh, Holy shit, Joey Diaz says he'll eat 2,000 milligrams of edibles. He's a large gentleman, though, right? I think. Um, so, that, that to me makes sense that he would, he could eat that much. But that's still an, an insane, I, well, no, even, he's, that's 2,000 milligrams, I mean, it would bankrupt you, if nothing else. I know he's a wealthy guy, but that's like a hundred bucks, hundred bucks, hundred, hundred, hundred bucks a day, yo. Well, uh, he's a wealthy guy; he can afford that. What am I? What the fuck am I talking about? People have thousand dollar day drug habits. Easy. Um, wow. What hit harder for you, this or the Canico five hundred milligrams? Right now, the Canico is still winning uh, in terms of the 500 milligrams, but I have not yet finished this, and I am not yet anywhere near peak. Um, I assume it's going to be a close race. I don't know for sure. Um, I've got one more bite of this to go. I'm going to have to uh, uh, get another drink because I pretty much finished this one um, because this thing is gross, and it's getting grosser by the second. Um, so I assume by the end it's going to be a pretty close race. Um, what is cactus juice? Is that a, um, is that a syrup? Wow. 200, I am still, I'm still blown away by 2,000 milligrams of edibles. But yes, I've seen Joey Diaz several times on the, uh, we talked about it earlier, the aforementioned, um, uh, what do you call, what, what do you, what the, that thing that we call it, that, that we talked about, uh, getting dug with high, that's right. Yes, I said it right by saying it wrong. Yes, yes. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's mescaline. Oh, mescaline. Okay. Uh, I've never done it. Uh, I think I would be down. Um, I think I would be down for... Ayahuasca too, possibly. I don't know. Um, basically, anything that can have that has like some sort of therapeutic uh, benefits, I would I would be willing to try. I I, I want to do anything. No opiates ever. I want to do any sort of cocaine or any of its derivations. Uh, no pills. Um, no. Uh, but mostly, I would try 
I think I would try acid for sure. Um, um, and shrooms, which I've done once it, to no effect really. Um, I have heard ayahuasca is gross too. I heard you pretty much definitely throw up. Isn't that the case with ayahuasca that you will throw up? That you have to have somebody there who's trained and basically prepares you to yak everywhere and then you're sort of okay? Um, uh, just eat shrooms and chocolate. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Just got to find somebody who, who can uh, deliver the, 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 the goods. Um, uh, so, Dane, have you had have you had shrooms before? I mean, not had shrooms. Have you had ayahuasca before? Is it, and if you have, is it quite as intense as I've heard or as sort of revelatory? Uh, I, I'm not sure if you're just knowledgeable or if you are also uh, experienced in these in these drugs. <laughs> the purge. Oh, 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 I said throwing up, not the, um, not the film trilogy. Is it a trilogy or is, well, there are just two of them. I keep, I don't know, I can't keep straight. I think there are three purges. And then a great Rick and Morty spoof. Feels good! Always get that stuck in my head. I hope I didn't get... Feels good stuck in your head from Rick and Morty, um, the uh, Purge spoof episode when they keep flashing to the uh, whatever bar it is that uh, the Purge, the, the bar that makes you purge better or whatever. Um, yeah, the Virgin experience is mind boggling, but after you get the message, it's just nauseating. Ooh. Oz eating sounds terrible. A hundred cups or so. Wow. That is crazy. That is so crazy. Oof. Guys, I am sorry if I am a little slow in the draw here. Um, I am intensely, intensely, intensely high. Um... It's 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 setting in really hard. Um, two and a half hours though, halfway. <laughs> the more you know, Rainbow. Do do do. Because the purge comes from a particular chemical. But the use of egg whites. I wonder how egg whites um, removes the chemical. Huh. Cool. You know your shit, man. You really, you're a... Um, you're 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 quite intelligent about your your drugs. You're quite knowledgeable. I I am uh, I am not. I um uh, my 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 knowledge lie 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 or lay, one of the two, elsewhere. See, not even it's definitely not grammar. About time to finish what left. <sighs> yeah, it is, guys. I might have to leave for two more seconds to go get another beverage. Um. And then we'll finish what's left. Yes. Okay. Proteins capture the tannis. Ah. The more you know again. All right. I will go get a another beverage and we will finish this last bit of brownie. No. I'll just deal with what I've got here. Oh, so sorry.
I could not agree more. Oh, thank you, Miami. Thank you. Oh, ooh. <laughs> that was so gross. Ugh. Peanut butter m ms get that, M that taste out of my mouth. Ugh. Ugh. Dane, that is amazing. That is so cool. Um, wow. Uh, if I were still a science writer, uh, I would totally love to interview you and write uh, something about you, but I uh, don't do that anymore. Um, wow. How many states, Dane, even allow a psychedelic therapist license? I assume, like, two? Three? Oh, man. Oh, 100%. Listen, I'll add it to the queue. Oh, I would... Oh, just... Okay. That makes sense. Uh, that is uh, a singular thing. Uh, I thought maybe maybe Washington or Oregon, but um, but just California is good enough. Um, but that's a wonderful thing that California does. I, I as again, I think uh, these kind of um, uh, uh, uses and uh, the the sort of research on this stuff is so so promising and encouraging, uh, and, and so helpful to people. Um, California Institute. Oh man, I don't even know what CIIS is. Uh, I know the uh, California Institute of Technology, but I don't. What is. Well, let me do some Googling. I've got a computer. That's what I'm doing, it's computing right now. I've got a Googler right here CIIS. The California Institute of Integral Studies, founded in 1968. Oh, how have I? How cool! How super cool! Masters of Arts, PhD, PsyD. Wow. I had no idea. I had no freaking idea. Oh, oh, okay. There are two different ones. I was like, I was confused. There are two C I I S. Oh, boy, guys. I'm having trouble even navigating my tabs, believe it or not. <sighs> wow. Wow. As a prescription for uh, depression treatment? Because that would be wonderful. Because there are certainly people out there that uh, are resistant to the, your SSRIs and whatever older antidepressants are out there and could really use some new treatments. Uh, that would be really, really, really cool if MDMA were a prescription for 
Oh. So, they would be given MDMA, and, and then how would they be, like, exposed? Like, would this be for uh, veterans or or people who are just, like, any kind of sort of traumatic events? And then uh, do they try to, like, replicate whatever the trauma is? Is that is that what the... Um, that... I guess, I, I don't know, maybe I'm confused about what exposure therapy is. I thought it was like where you sort of uh, expose somebody to what they're uh, traumatized for by, or by um, in order to get them to sort of overcome their... Let me see. Exposure therapy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you give people... <coughs> MDMA, and then have them encounter their feared object, or whatever, without, oh, uh, that's cool. Is that, is that how that would work? Is that you would, um, basically have them do exposure therapy while on MDMA, um, with the idea that MDMA would relax them even further? Turtle 88? I don't know, to be honest. I actually don't know what either of those words mean, unfortunately, if I'm being honest. $14 billion a year to PTSD? Holy shit, is that just like in medical costs, or God forbid, is that like in, also, does that include like the cost of their suicides and how that uh, cost affects the economy? Um, Is that true? Psilocybin has a high chance of making it worse. So if you do exposure therapy with um, uh, on mushrooms, if you're doing exposure therapy while on mushrooms, you could get uh, your symptoms might become worse. Oh, that's that sucks. I had no idea. I thought I thought psilocybic uh, mushrooms were supposed to be. Um, Pretty helpful in that case. I'd always heard it was good for trauma or um, dealing with trauma. But I guess that's a different thing. Exposure therapy and dealing with trauma are not necessarily uh, uh, mutually exclusive. Ninety five percent effective. Holy shit. Uh, that's about as good of a result as you could hope for. How fortuitous, by the way, that we had a, 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 a PTSD and um, hallucinogenics and uh, expert about uh, treatment-resistant depression. Had to scroll back up to find out the exact title. My voice is really starting to go, wow. I can uh, barely hear myself talk at this point. Uh, that is true, Turtle88. I just did it with uh, several people. Uh, exact same amount. The other two people uh, had a much more intense reaction than I did. My reaction was rather tepid, in fact. Um,
It wasn't bad. Uh, it was just uh, less than I thought it would be. Wow. Wow. A fully one third of people have bad trips on the therapeutic dose. And that is referring to psilocybic mushrooms. Wow. And bad trips are entirely self reported, obviously, right? Like somebody just says, like, what happened to me was entirely unpleasant. And then that is considered a bad trip. What if somebody says like, oh, man, it was so weird. Like, you know, I don't know. I can't say I didn't like it, but it was so strange. You know, like, how do you quantify trips? Is it is it just good and bad or is it a spectrum? You can quote that shit pretty well, that clinical literature. Uh, you have quite the memory for it. Um, I'm sorry I'm grilling you so intensely, but it, it's so interesting. Uh, it's so fascinating. I was just, I was talking about this sh before I had any idea uh, what, who, uh, I was speaking to an expert. Uh, I, I think it's so fascinating. Um, uh, it's really quite cool. I am sorry that my voice is going, and I am sorry that I am uh, getting uh, even more boring than I was before, uh, because uh, my mind is also starting to get quite foggy. Um, I'm, I would say you're quite immersed in it, Dane. Uh, anybody going for that PhD? Uh, pretty much uh, ha has to uh, um, uh, <laughs> I am awesomely ripped uh, that's an apt description um, a very apt description uh, I'm approaching um, about as high as I've been uh, the only thing that is preventing me from like just curling up and watching Netflix at this particular moment is is my pledge um uh uh am I ever going to review cushy punch I reviewed one cushy punch turtle 88 just one uh I found it uh immensely unsatisfying unfortunately because I think they're quite expensive um uh I will review more because there people have told me that they are um, sort of inconsistent in potency, and I would like to give them a second chance because I've only given them the one chance. Uh, so I will review Cushy Punch again, but uh, I have reviewed them once before. Uh, uh, I think if you look somewhere in my upload history, you can find it. It's closer to the beginning, um, but I have reviewed them once uh, and did not really like it, unfortunately. Um, Oh, wow, that would be incredible. Oh, Miami, uh, no, I can still do a game stream. I, I just lost track of everything. And believe it or not, can you believe that? That I would have lost track of uh, stuff, uh, what I was planning on doing. Uh, boy, I'm just going through all my different tabs that I had uh, opened since starting the stream. Gary Vaynerchuk. Grams in an ounce. Fear of milk. Lactophobia. Wow. Oh boy. I am very high. Uh, game stream, game stream. Overwatch. Let's see. Uh, sources.
they did since that archery post. It was a, a pretty remarkable uh, thing. It was a very nice experience. Um, I was, I was, oh shit, feedback. Damn you, Overwatch. Damn you. I gotta close it. Bad, bad Overwatch. I, uh, I'm too high to deal with this audio. Producer's not here to deal with it either. It's just me. Working overtime. Producer was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope, nope. And I was like, I understand. I was also like, you don't exist. And they were like, hey, I, I'm your id. And I was all like, fuck you. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, producer's not here, nor does a producer exist. If a producer did exist, I would not allow a producer to be here for this because it would be really boring. But there is no producer on Weeds. Maybe there is. The behind the scenes of Weeds is an interesting shop. Well, I'm glad you found us, Miami. I'm glad you forgave us for our shitty audio quality on that first video. It was an unfortunate video to have posted to r slash trees. Um, but, you know, I'm still glad that it was uh, it was posted. I'm really appreciative for everyone that uh, that, that watched. And uh, I'm really appreciative for all the people who, uh, who gave me tips about uh, how to trim my beard. Or... Um, how to uh, make my videos look like uh, ISIS recruitment videos? Uh, I really appreciate those those comments as well. Um, they were, they made me they made me giggle um, because like my beard is big. Um, it made me laugh. Um, uh, well, yeah. So Miami, thank you so much. This video was for you. Is for you because it's still happening somehow. It is still happening. I am crazy high. Um, okay, Overwatch seemed like it was going to screw up my audio. So that's out. I could still try um, uh, Offworld Trading Company, a.k.a. the best video game you've never heard of that somehow only has a 78 on Metacritic, even though it deserves, like, you know, a 91 to be really granular about it, to say like, I'm gonna get really pedantic and just go. I don't really understand the um, the the ten scale that Metacritic has decided to use, um, or the one scale rather. Sorry, uh, it does. What's the difference between a ninety-two and a ninety-three? I know that's. Um, I know that's um, a criticism often lobbed, but. Uh, I actually like Metacritic, and I'm not a Metacritic hater. Screw the Metacritic haters. Not don't screw anybody. Everybody should. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. A lot of Western diets contradict dangerously with ayahuasca. Ooh, my diet is very could be described as quite Western. Yes, quite. Quite Western, in fact. Um, well, I'm glad you find your own edibles to be consistent. How many, um, how many grams of weed do you think you uh, use in your average edible? Uh, would you say, uh, Dane? Are you using a, a gram per edible or um, something um, more or less significant? And are you using um, high grade bud or are you using like a um, um, uh, shake or something? Shake, shake, shake. I might have to go get another beverage and I might have to turn this AC back on. Because it is getting warm. Need the caffeine, guys. I might have to play that Jeopardy music for you again. Boo -doo 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 -doo. 
I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. All right, I should have turned the AC off while I left. I apologize, but I am back. Oh boy, it has been nearly three hours now. Um, it has been two hours and like 45 minutes, maybe two and a half hours since uh, I finished the edible completely the last little bit of it. Um, so I'm not at peak high yet for sure. Uh, two dogs in now joining the party. Um, so I anticipate getting even higher. Um, I'm sorry that uh, my uh, range of topics has seemed to have shrunk. My brain power is uh, less. Uh, oh boy! Oh boy! Is is less substantial than it once was. Not to say that it ever had any real oomph, but um, but yeah, it, it definitely has less than it did before. I am exceptionally, exceptionally uh, high right now. Um, uh, I my voice is giving out um, this might be the only time I have talked for three hours straight in my life um, not that I've talked exactly straight I there's some gaps here and there um, so this this is this is uh, more taxing on my voice than I would have thought um, uh, but I am proud that I finished this brownie and I'm not this is not oh uh, and I'm not saying anything I'm just saying hey rock on guys um uh thank you though immensely thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for sticking around I know this has got to be the most boring thing uh, imaginable but I really appreciate everybody who is here watching um uh Miami Riddle, journey without it and you will never prevail. But if you have too much of it, you will surely fail. What is it? Ooh, I like riddles. Uh, am I going, am I ever good at them? No. Am I going to be good at it now? You bet your ass I'm not. Um, uh, let's see. Journey without it, and you will never prevail. But if you have too much of it, you will surely fail. What is it? Um, uh, is it? I have not tried that Turtle 88. I've never actually tried infusing with oils. Unfortunately, I am a, um, uh, oh boy, uh, the riddle, I, I have no idea, oh shit, I really want to Google it, but you'll know, because you'll see me clicking, so I'm just going to Google it, and then you can know that I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, 
I got this widescreen monitor. Why am I not using it? This ultra widescreen monitor. Excuse me. Ultra widescreen. All right. Riddle time. Journey. Confidence. I get it now. I see. I see, yes. You can have too little and too much. Too little and nobody will invest in you and you will never invest in yourself. Too much, however, and you will uh, be burdened with arrogance and uh, go down like Icarus, fly too close to the sun. I just used that metaphor earlier today for something else. But I used it as not a metaphor, but as a story. As the story as a metaphor, but not the story of Icarus. But this, it, I used it meta, met, in a meta fashion. <sighs> Boy, guys. Oh, we've crossed the three hour mark. This, oof. Welcome back to Weets, guys. It's been three hours since I first had the Corova. Mint black bar. And it was, tastes, it tasted gross. Um, but it got me pretty, it got me high. And I'm only getting higher. This is wheats. This is 1,000 milligrams THC. It's a lot. <sighs> Somehow I'm supposed to do this for two more hours. It seems like it's going to be impossible. Turtle 88. No, that's totally fine. Totally happy to answer that question. My favorite, uh, <laughs> oh man, I wish I could have shared some. I totally wish I could have shared some Victoria Gray. Um, it would have been, uh, it would have been totally wonderful to, um, to split some of this, uh, to share some of this burden, but it is what it is. Uh, my favorite edible, uh, Turtle88, I really appreciate, yes, the question, great question, great question. My favorite edible uh, is, say, the Corova's 250 milligram s'mores brownie. Easy peasy. Uh, pretty much any of their 250 milligram uh, products are great. They'll get you super, super high. Um, uh, and I love them all. I am sorry that I am barely, uh, conscious. Um, this is, um, been, uh, more laborious, uh, somehow both more and less laborious than I would have thought. I both thought I would have 
passed out by now, but I also thought that I... Oh, I have no way of making that make sense. Unfortunately, I am too high to um, connect those dots, make those points intersect with that line. Oh, Jesus Christ. Whew, and my voice is going out. It is going. It is going, going, going. Um, and I just keep talking about the same things over and over and over again. Um... And I really, really, really feel like uh, I need to do maybe pass out at some point soon. Um, that seems like that might be a nice thing to do. Thinking about how comfortable my bed feels, um, how good it would feel to lie down on it, um, how good it would feel to be on my bed. Um, I don't even need to put covers on. I could just put my head on the pillow and turn on a fan or the AC and just um, uh, get really, 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 yeah. Um, it would be it would be really nice. Uh, that's kind of what. Uh, I would like to do. Um, oh shit! Very high, very high. Um, <sighs> bed. Wow. Um, it's only five oh seven p.m. here, but. I can't tell you how wonderful a bed feel would feel right now. Just with the softness and the comfort and the sheets and like the pillows. Oh, the pillows. Do I think I'll go to space? Uh, I definitely think I will be um, in outer space. I think I might even be uh, enter um, uh, some other sort of trans-dimensional void or something. Um, that's what it would feel like to go to bed right now. Uh, I can't... Can, do you understand how good pillows feel? They feel so good. Oh my god. When your head is like lying on a pillow, and you just get to lie there and go take a nap and sleep and sleep. Oh man. Never take sleep for granted. Uh, do I think I'll go to space? Oh, you are being serious. Oh, shit. I'm so high. Uh, God, I hope so is the answer to that question. Uh, the answer, uh, yes. No, no. Uh, my answer is no. I think uh, the geopolitical situation is way too volatile right now uh, to ever uh, hope to. Uh, like, let's say the world had continued to pace with Hillary Clinton, I, I, I'm not saying that Hillary Clinton was wonderful or the perfect candidate or, you know, about vouching for anything, but just what, oh, jeez, not to get political. I am so sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody politically, but I just think that the world is too geopolitically volatile to have um, the investment required for any real personal space travel, whether it be governmental or, um, or, or through uh, private business to be affordable for uh, for any reasonable rate. Now, I think if, if the world had sort of continued to pace in the kind of like Obama kind of growth era uh, with, um, uh, you know, with, with Tesla and Amazon fighting their rocket battles, I think that, yes, I would have gotten into space at some point in my life. Um, but... Um, Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think in, um, I, 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 but I don't think right now the world is in a place where that kind of investment could be made, uh, in any, in any real way, uh, to make it happen, in a, or excuse me, in an affordable way. Um, I hope it can happen even for the elite. I, I, I mean, honestly, that, that'd be fine with me just to have it more common forever, you know, for, for humankind period. Um, but I'm not even sure that, 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 that'll be the case. Um, 
shit's bad. Shit is very bad, um, unfortunately. Um, the world is not in a good place uh, politically uh, and, uh, and and doesn't look like there's any uh, uh, hopeful signs on the horizon. Not to be too, too much of a downer. Um, well, thank you, Turtle88. Uh, Victoria Gray, I do occasionally uh, participate in um, 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 uh, uh, meditation or or um, or uh, what what is the the other term for it? Uh, oh shit! Um, Meditation or uh, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I do that thing, and it's good. Um, I rarely do it high, though. I don't know why I don't do it high often. Um, I find myself needing things more visual often when I'm high, like. I crave stuff for my eyeballs when I'm very high. So meditation would be very difficult for me to achieve. Um, wow. Or it would be very difficult for me to meditate effectively because I would be constantly wanting to see something, to do something with my eyes. So I, I guess I don't do it that for that reason, but I should give it a try because I bet you're right. I bet it is totally incredibly intoxicating and relaxing. A hundred K to hit suborbital flight right now, I think. Well, one sub, well, yeah, suborbital flight is, I guess, close enough to considering it getting into uh, space. Where is it 100k? I guess, I mean, is it, you know, can you, can you really just drop, if you, if you were a millionaire, could you really drop 100k and go into suborbital space? I, that, that'd be great, that'd be great, I totally, totally awesome if that's, uh, I, I mean, I, don't, I have no reason to doubt that's true, and I did not realize it was that cheap, uh, and yeah, I would assume it would get cheaper. Um, but I would still uh, uh, say that 100k is prohibitively expensive for, you know, 99.5% of, well, maybe 99% of people um, for even a once in a lifetime experience. But maybe it becomes like. Um, Maybe maybe it becomes such a transcendent things. Um, maybe maybe going into outer space becomes such a transcendent, incredible, wonderful thing that um, it becomes the new religious experience, and then it does become worth the incredible expense. Like it would be like your lifelong tithe or your uh, trip to Mecca. You know the incredible once in a lifetime expense that you make just to to sort of experience spiritual bliss. That would be cool. That'd be cool if, 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 if that, if our, you know, obsession with, um, spending money on, uh, uh, religious, religious, uh, pomp, pompetry and, um, 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 or ornamentary were instead invested in, in, um, in space travel. That'd be really great. Um, if we could sort of just convince people that, that those things were equal and it doesn't seem to me like it should be that difficult a thing to, to well of course it would be impossible to do but um theoretically like because how amazing it would be to go into suborbital space even uh it seems like it should be such a transcendent experience that it could be you know as spiritually fulfilling as like uh uh a, a, a guy who rose from the dead or whatever um or you know, pick your, not to pick on one religion, but uh, um, 
Yeah, uh, space travel. I would love, I totally hope uh, one day to be uh, in outer space. That would be amazing um, in my lifetime. I just don't, I do not foresee it happening. Um, I, I totally think we were there, but uh, I think we've backslid, um, unfortunately. Whew. My voice. This th this is a hump that I did not... I, I, I kind of thought about it. Like I kind of thought, oh man, talking for five hours. That might be tough. Uh, but I had no idea uh, just how ill-prepared I was going to be. Uh, it, it has been uh, ravaging, actually. Uh, uh, I can't believe how little I can... Uh, uh, speak at this point. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, Ooh, guys. Oh, man. Okay. Um, I am starting to feel a little queasy, unfortunately. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I might, uh, for the sake of, uh, not having to, uh, Jeez, yeah, I am starting to feel just a little unwell. Um, I think uh, I haven't eaten enough food yet today with all this getting high. Um, I might have to uh, go eat some food or something and uh, and come back, unfortunately. Um, that and my voice is, uh, is rapidly giving out completely. Um, uh, oh, man. Yeah, uh, guys, I think I am, uh, I, I am going to have to call it pause here. I am very sorry that I didn't make it the full five hours, but I really enjoyed talking to each and every one of you for this long. It's been a total, total blast. Uh, thank you, Korova. It's been a real trip, I promise you. Um, you're going to get your money's worth if you try this one. Be sure to share it with, uh, like, 20 friends like they suggest. Uh, uh, I... Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And we will uh, we'll see you again in the future. Thanks again. Bye, everyone. Good night or good afternoon, wherever you are. Bye.